Ferrari is nearly the same in terms of precision, like the McLaren. Oh, cold brown moment there. Holy crap. What the freaking race car god. Wow. Just for a second I thought I'm gonna lose the car and spin as well. The Aston in front of me looks to be irritated as well. He completely lost his rhythm right there. Oh my god. When a car takes off, you know it just takes off. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Oh, shit! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I was drifting through two corners. That looked absolutely insane. <laughs> better line through there and I was so quick and now comes the ultimate maneuver whoops I'm, <laughs> I'm drifting it from left to right look at that that looks absolutely smashing let's look at this drift 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 drift, drift. <laughs> that looks really sweet I have to save that rip Let's go, guys. Oh, oh, oh. There's already some touchy touchy going on. Whoa. That was close. Did I lose a spot? Yeah, I think so. Boy, they are rumbling over there. Now comes the interesting corner. Good evening, everyone. Hi. We already got some people in chat. Hey, hey Adrian, Serenity, and of course, our VIP is here, Ian. Ian, are you prepared? <laughs> uh, I actually wanted to try something new with the chat box, but... Pop, 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 pop. does not want to show the chat. I'll need to fix that later. Okay. Cool. So, we have something very special tonight. We are doing a second live workshop. The first live workshop was all around custom textures, custom libraries, but today gonna be a bit more serious <laughs> so that's why i invited ian over here he'll join the stream in in a second and what we are going to do is we are deep diving into how to set up a car specifically for tonight um, a gt4 car because of the upcoming uh, because of the upcoming sim grid event from laguna seca ah chat seems to be working now
Awesome. Awesome. I'm always happy. It's everything is completely new for me here. So while we are talking a bit, let's just switch over to the beautiful new livery that I unveiled just today as a free download on YouTube and uh, shared also on Instagram. So um, I did the delivery basically. Um, I decided to, to participate in the Laguna Sega GT4 Madness. And um, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm taking out the AMG, but I, I don't know what it is. I just can't drive with a cast uh, with a with a standard livery. I need something special. And then just I don't know why I came across a picture with, uh, of the the Nürburgring uh, race taxi, and I thought like, oh, looks tricky, but I kind of want to do it. And so that's how this new livery came to be. It took me around 15 hours. It was tough because I wanted to get as as close as possible to the original with the camouflage and the font and everything. So most of it is just really from scratch. I was lucky to find the beast writing from, from another uh, picture. So we have a new special texture. When uh, you can you can just download it and use it for your own GT4 AMG. Just feel free to, to check out my video. Leave a like if you want and there you will also find the, the download link in the description. So. And because of this, Ian and myself, we were talking a lot about, look, um, let's let's just do like a setup uh, workshop together because there's so much to the car. And I think one of the things I'm missing with many of the faster drivers, be because I'm, I'm not a very quick driver, uh, not not an alien or anything, I'm, I'm getting better. But what I'm really missing is um, the, the, the players, they, they, they never share their secrets and never share their approach and what, what um, they are you know paying attention to what the car is doing and how you can change it and it's it's a very complicated very big topic and uh for this um we decided look let's just take a first step start with a gt4 car because they are not as complex as a gt3 car they don't have as many um, options to share uh and to change so maybe this is uh, a bit easier for the people to understand and uh that's why we are here together now so uh please everyone just feel free to ask questions anytime in the chat we will do our best to answer every question everything um that you want to know we um yeah basically we will now start off just like with a short introduction who is ian um why did i uh, invite him what does he do um and then um, what we are going to do first is track analysis we're going to show you a picture walk you through the track um what's important what are the differences between between the tracks you know is it more mechanical is it more uh, aerodynamic grip and stuff like that and um based on this then um we take the approach of me just taking the gt4 on the track which is laguna zeca and driving the first few laps with a base aggressive setup and um, Ian will be live via Discord because the stream just have has uh, too much of a delay so I will basically stream to YouTube and stream via Discord so uh, that's the first one and um, he will just watch and um, based on what I tell him uh, and based on what he can see the car doing we will then take our first steps so while we were talking let me just get Ian on the phone in Discord I will just quickly open up, share some track pictures with me, that's cool, so that we can go through that. So in the meantime, let me just quickly switch over and get Ian on board. Do, 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 do. Hey Ian. Uh, hello. Awesome. Welcome to the stream for the, what, this, for <laughs> the second you. time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, hope you're having an amazing night. Uh, I'm Ian Jalili. I'm going to help uh, Bunatix to set up his AMG GT4 tonight. Exactly. <laughs> So let me just open with basically, yeah, as I said, what we are going to start with is we're taking a look at the track. Okay, so um, are you loading the uh, track image right now? Because I'm a little yes. bit back. <laughs> you just called me in your stream. 
no problem just should be there yes okay so, so basically just loaded the first picture okay all right is it the top-down view of the laguna seca right yes all right so basically uh setting up a car is uh actually a matter of um you know understanding uh, how the physics of the car work on a track like it's uh, like understanding how to behave on like you know a certain a certain you know um situation on like for example maybe a rainy day or it, it's basically almost the same as it is on the streets because uh you know uh, when you're setting up a car it's uh set to uh, you know behave according to what the track is giving at it yeah so basically uh, what we do first in uh like setting up a car uh, we first start by analyzing the track so we see if the track is uh basically more uh, focused on it being uh, aerodynamically, uh, you know, uh, efficient type of track, or maybe a mechanical grip uh, focused type of track, or maybe it has like too many straight lines, and we need top speed, and we need to find, you know, um, a way to get less drag and keep this uh, efficient downforce that we need, and you know, move forward. Yeah. So. Uh, on that note, we can go to the elevation changes. Yeah. So the elevation changes that we're talking about right now is like the second image that uh, I've sent you. It's basically because we need to see how bumpy the track gets, how uh, you know stiff we can get with the suspension because we need to uh, we need the car to be as planted as possible on the track. But yeah. if the track is too bumpy, if there is too much elevation changes, you know, too sudden elevation changes, uh, you know, different crests and like maybe even a jump, just like the cork, uh, the corkscrew on this track, uh, we need to t uh, get another approach to the track, and it's actually making the car soft enough to absorb the impacts when you're uh, doing all those elevation changes. Because if you don't do that, then the car will bounce all over the place and you will basically lose the control of the car. Okay. So that's just analyzing the track itself. After that, we need to like uh, see how the temperature goes on, how the weather will be. Will there be any rain? Will there be any like uh, excessive wind, humidity? Everything is uh affecting the car and you know taking you know maybe tens or maybe hundreds of the second of your time yeah so basically a race engineer a full out race engineer needs to do all of this uh calculations and uh since we're talking about real race engineers um Basically, teams have a team of engineers, race engineers. Yeah, yeah. Each of them are uh, actually uh, academically, uh, you know, practiced and learned about how to, uh, you know, change every bits and pieces of the car. And they do calculations. They don't change it, change the uh, bits and pieces of the car based on, you know, their visual observation. Yeah, also um, they have like all this software and programs and everything they need yeah. at hand. Well, probably, you know, um, the softwares and programs are just to, you know, take information. It's not to calculate or anything, mm. do ca calculations or anything. It's basically to take information, you know, numerical information. It's called telemetry, yeah. uh, which is basically uh, giving you a numerical um, output of how the car uh, behaves on the track. So I'm going to give you a, uh, you know, quick heads up. I'm not a professional uh, race engineer. I do do engineering stuff because I own a design studio. I uh, have um, experience in making cars, building cars, and we uh, actually uh, have an ongoing project that is a supercar that, uh, so because of that, I have the basic knowledge and how to uh, for the setup for any car. And of course you have the experience because you have been working with Assetto Corsa Competizione and other 
other drivers in setting up uh, setups. Exactly. I've yeah. been working with Amir Hosseini on his setups. Uh, yeah. It wasn't all my job. It was me and another guy who is a very, 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 I can I can completely say he's a genius. Like <laughs> he did all of the calculations. He did calculations of every single piece of the car. And I was the I was the guy who gave you know the first impressions, the first changes, the initial changes that uh, you know Amir had to uh, do to his car yeah. to you know make a basis for his uh, setup to go on. So I'm more of a you know visual type of guy. I'm more like uh, let's experience the drive, then do the changes and everything. And after like what I what I do, a serious team of uh, race engineers go ahead and like uh, do all the calculations and all the you know um technical stuff yeah yeah uh so what i do is basically you know it's like if it's, uh, it's a little bit funny if anyone has seen the movie rush where uh, nikki lauda went uh, on the side of the track a ferrari went past and you just you know uh, looked back at the engineers and said, you know, change this and that, and the, then the car yeah. will be faster. This is like what I'm going to do right now. Like, I'm going to see how the car behaves. I'm going to see how, uh, you know, the car turns, how the track will, uh, you know, behave back at the car, and then do all the single bits of uh, bits and pieces of the changes. Yep, awesome. So, um... We're just gonna start um, with the track, I'd say. Any anything specific about the track? What, right. what I can say you about um, the the settings uh, from the practice server? We will have approximately forty degrees of track temperature. It will be sunny, mm -hmm. no rain, so basically way too hot, way too perfect conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and it will probably be in the afternoon, so in broad daylight and sunshine. So. Um, Okay, so if you uh, load up the top-down uh, view of the circuits, uh, I can you yep, know do some, a little bit of analyzing of the circuit. So uh, the circuit of the Laguna Seca is a very very technical uh, circuit. As you can yeah. see, it has um, you know too many tight corners, which we basically call mechanical grip corners, okay. which means that uh, it needs more mechanical grips around this track for example the uh hairpin uh lift on the turn two the turn yeah. three turn four uh turn five is a little bit of a mix of both it has a little bit of an uh, aerodynamic aerodynamical uh grip uh required um but you know the turn six is a little bit more you know on the aerodynamical side yeah. but the uh turn seven and the turn eight and eight a which is actually the corkscrew is a heavily mechanical uh, yeah. dependent like you have to you know change the car multiple times on that corner to make it work yeah the infamous Perfect. corkscrew <laughs> yeah yeah and because when you're coming out of the corkscrew uh on to the turn nine the turn nine is a rather high speed corner but because you're doing that you know that much of a turn you're not carrying that much speed so mm -hmm. What, what is uh, this layout telling us uh, is that we need a highly mechanical uh, grip. We need a uh, we need to gain aerodynamics more by uh, actually doing uh, ground effect stuff. Like uh, we need to lower the right height, use the diffusers mm -hmm. to gain downforce. And, you know, if it was a GT3 car, I don't know if the GT4 car's wing can be, uh, you know, changed. We need to, you know, tilt it a little bit back because we have a lot of straight lines and we need that straight line speed in the straight lines. Yeah. So our approach is going to be a highly mechanical grip uh, dependent setup and a low drag setup. But we mm -hmm. need that efficient, efficient downforce. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's about the cornering stuff, about the dampening and you know the um, spring and everything. Uh, if you load up the uh, elevation yeah, got picture it. that I've uh, sent you, uh, as you can see, there is a lot of elevation changes, especially yeah. in the sector one and the sector two. Like the sec sector three, the red part is not that you know uh, bumpy and uh, everything. 
Oh, uh, I mean, sector it. one is the red part. Yeah, yeah, the sector one is the red part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two and three. I was, the... I was watching it from the other side. Yeah. Uh, the sector one is the red part. It's not that much, you know, um, change on the elevation. Yes, there is a uh, downfall on the first corner before before that, which doesn't really affect us. Uh, but yeah. the sector two and the sector three are heavily changing on the elevation. Especially yeah. in the beginning of the sector three, where the corkscrew is, and before that, at the end of the sector two, which actually there's a, a slight bump before you get into the yeah right, um, basically uh, right one. in the breaking zone for the corkscrew is a massive bump. That's exactly, really tricky. That if you don't exactly. manage the line correctly, that there's like you can hit it perfectly and then it doesn't really annoy you. But if you don't hit it perfectly, you basically lose traction and can't really break, and then you just mess up the corkscrew <laughs> exactly so what we're uh, what we need to do uh is that we need to set up the dampers and the suspension itself to absorb as much as uh you know the impact possible you know because when you're going inside the corkscrew you want to uh, carry as much as speed as possible mm -hmm. so when you're braking the car is nose diving down uh, there is like a crest you're going up there and there's a lot of stress going on on the suspension so mm -hmm. at this uh, part of the um, you know this part of the uh, circuit we need to uh, set the suspension in a way to absorb as much as damp uh, you know damp as much as you know um, as, as much as, as the possible, imperfections yeah. possible and we need to have a rather soft spring because springs all they do is bounce the car around they make the car stiffer the, it's actually uh, it's actually called wheel rate in the game uh but what we're talking about is actually springs themselves uh, because mm -hmm. spring rate is actually wheel rates in the game okay so we need to work a lot with our dampers and we need to lower our uh you know uh spring rates and because mercedes amg gt itself is known uh, for its you know heavily spring rates dependent of a car yeah. uh, we, need, we are going to have a hard time to find the optimal spot for well, the, the good thing is in the gt4 cars as far as i've seen you don't really have much options for example the, the well, we, we will see in, in a second so um they they are uh you don't have as much freedom to mess around like in a gt3 car which maybe makes it a bit easier <laughs> it makes it a little bit be, uh, a little bit easier but you have less options to you know of change course, yeah. and uh get to the final results that you need yeah okay so um i'd say the next step is to just hop into the car right exactly so, let so me basically just... what um we need uh, you to do is that you know Assetto corsa has uh pre-made setups for on its own it's yeah. like there's an uh, aggressive one a soft one and i guess a slow one i don't really know that the, their names but there's what a safe you're... basically a safe preset which handles i don't know stable and is pretty slow and then there's the aggressive and there's even a wet preset which is basically the worst even though even when it's raining, I never use the wet preset because it just feels horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what what I need you to do is to run a um, you know outlap, maybe like a maybe two or three laps on the aggressive setup, and yeah. I need to watch your stream and the screen stream if you turn it on for me. Yeah, and I will see how the uh, car actually behaves. How much body roll does it have? How uh, where do you lose your you know uh, back end where you're having understeer, and then we start to change the car. Each bit, uh, on its own. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Does it work for you? Uh, actually, I do. Yes. Awesome. I upgraded my bandwidth only for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first we are streaming via discord for ian and on my stream cool so i'm i'm doing even though there's a practice server i'm just gonna do that in single player because you never know what's going on on the practice server yeah okay cool so we have oh yeah track 38 so nearly the same that's good even 39 okay 39 optimum you see everything right yeah i see 
Awesome. So the track temperature, if there's a race going on, the track temperature will actually rise because the cars are going around. And a very cool thing about uh, Assetto Corsa is that they've actually made uh, the uh, temperatures dynamic. So yeah. it's a little bit more on the realistic side. Okay. Uh, plus, one thing that I almost always forgot to mention, uh, especially when we're like, uh, you know, doing all the talkings and everything, is that you ha you must have different setups for either race or qualifying lap. So on the qualifying lap, you need less uh, fuel. You're alone on the track. There's not much track temperature on the track itself and you want to push the car as much as you can uh, as you can possibly do yeah, so yeah. uh you don't need to save your tire you don't need to save your fuel you don't need to you know deal with anyone else on the track you need to do the fastest uh, lap you can do and uh that's it but so in a race you need to save fuel you need to um do all of those crazy stuff so they are there are you know considerable differences between a race setup and a qualifying setup so basically what i thought is because of you know the time we have it would probably be good to focus on just one and i thought yeah. since it's a one hour race it might be good to find just a good balanced setup for a race rather than just for for something you know of a qualifying because i think maybe it might help people more to to be aware of what they need to look out for to have a race and to endure one hour of racing and have a good setup yeah yeah well uh there's there are you know several uh good things that you have in one uh, part for yourself because on the first thing you're driving a gt4 car gt4 cars are usually more you know uh, forgiving on their tires in general yeah because you know there are way there are rare way less aerodynamical parts working on the car there's uh, not as much as uh, you know mechanical grip on the car and uh, go, go, go. you know the race that you're uh, taking right now you said is a one hour race right yeah so there's not much uh, to do on no the, um, on the car itself the changes because it's a rather short one as well so I'm just heading out yep and yeah usually the first one or even two laps i take it just a bit slower or especially in the first lap because the tires are uh cold ice cold yeah uh, yes <laughs> ice cold but the so, interesting thing that yeah a little bit of a heads up this is my first time even seeing a gt4 car race on this track so okay bear with me <laughs> so we have a bit of a challenge for you guys The fun thing is that uh, I mentioned to you previously already is that the car feels really uh, direct and easy to handle on colder fresh tires than it does when you are warmed up and have everything on temperature. So it might be that the more grip you get and the hotter the tires get, the, the, the handling gets worse. Uh, well, it's not that actually, it's because, uh, you know, cold tires uh, tend to have less grip in general. So your car, uh, your the aggressive preset setup in this uh, Mercedes is basically, uh, you know, making the car understeer a lot on cold tires. But when you're actually going on and having a, uh, you know, a warm tire, then the grip gets, uh, you know, so much higher, and the car wants to, you know, dart itself around, and then you lose the car. So basically, that means uh, what that means is that uh, the basic preset setup is actually made for cold tires, not for warm tires. Yeah. Okay. So right here, when you're going down, your uh, your actual um, center of gravity, the uh, weight of the car is lifting up. So there is less grip on the tires because of the less weight that you're putting on the car. Okay. Right here on this corner, you're having you're experiencing a little bit of understeer, but at the end, when it's over, when you're lifting, you're going to an oversteer. So that's yep. what we need to you know, fix. You can see my stream fine. Yep. No problem. Up, up, up. Too late on the brakes. 
So if anyone in the chat has any question or uh, can let me know if everything's working fine or not, uh, it would be very much appreciated. So far it's pretty quiet. I guess everyone is listening carefully to your wisdom. <laughs> oh god, the corkscrew feels just like lottery. <laughs> I just remember the first time going through there in, in race room, actually. Um, it was terrifying. Because it's completely blind. They even raise MotoGP on there and it's just madness. Oh, it's just crazy. I, Can I've you imagine that? To, I've never been to uh, Laguna Seca, but uh, the footage I've I mean, I can't imagine how that feels on a motorbike when you have to, you know, change direction yeah. and throw your body weight onto a different side. Yeah, it's basically like falling down and controlling you yourself and the bike yeah. itself at the same time. So from what I'm seeing is that you need uh more rotation on the corners but a more controlled rotation your body roll is not as you know optimal as it should be you have yeah. a little bit too much body roll and that uh, makes the inside tires contact patch lose their uh, you know, grip because your inside tires are lifting oh, 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 out oh, oh, oh. of the Ooh. that was a bit too motivated sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah It's just We've got some light damage on the front. Come on, come on. Sand pit, sand pit. Usually the corkscrew is my nemesis, not this one. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I, I'm honest to you, I have been training on a setup that uh, I've been trying to sort out for myself the past few days and it felt a bit different. So going back to the base aggressive setup is now again a different challenge for me, but um, it's okay. It's the best but starting you're point. you it pretty good. I mean, it's, there's not that much of a problem. I, as far as I can see, I don't know what's, <laughs> what's happening in the real life with you, but... The thing is that uh, I've been practicing this track for I think now 10 or 12 hours and it, it it really helps to you know muscle memory what's coming up and what you have to do and I found out a few things about the track which is really interesting like the the corner that comes up now the first ride is just like really just a little bit of braking in into like second gear and not you know not not too much and th the same thing is with this one here you just basically break a little bit see that you Take, stick to the inside and take it out so in, in the beginning I was just braking way too hard and trying to to slow down the card way too much this corner is still a bit feels really weird on the aggressive setup and then comes the fast blind left oh, okay this time it worked Feels like you just throw in the car and hope for it to get through. The noises the car makes through the corkscrew. I'm sorry, Mercedes. So it's a little bit more challenging than GT3 cars to set up because, uh, from what I can see, it's. Like, you know, I know what I need to change, but I'm a little bit afraid that it makes the car a little bit more unsettled because it will turn in way more aggressive. Well, well that's what we yeah. are here to find out. <laughs> yeah, that's what we are here to find out. So for a little bit more toe on the back, and that makes the car turn in way faster. And Ali Ali says change nose. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, he means like you you crashed. You need to change your front bumper. Oh, probably, but I'm I'm still going faster. Yeah. Well, oh, Ali nice. is uh, one of you know my mechanical engineering 
Thanks, Dan. Hey, cool. Hi, Ali. Yeah, well, I, I've done a little bit of them uh, this time. <laughs> ah, you, you got yourself some backup. Yeah. Oh, every time breaking for the corkscrew is so horrible. Okay, so in this corner, the uh, in the corkscrew, the car feels a little bit uh, nervous. That means we need more dampening. Uh, so, which is a little bit of a, ri a little bit of a risk to change everything all at once because we need to change, yeah. uh, you know, each part one by one. So, but um, yeah. Okay, uh, do this next lap and then just box it. Okay. Just also checking the tire pressures maybe. GT Force should be maximum 27 PSI, I think. So you need less pressure on the front and a little bit more pressure on the rear. So the fact about the uh, tire pressures is that uh, when you change them, they don't change your uh, on-track pressure linearly. When you're reducing your tire pressure, it actually uh, reducing it by one may have like a like one unit effect, but reducing it by two will have a 1.5 uh, unit uh, effect. You know, if that makes any sense, like I'm. Um, yeah. Say. Because uh, you know, reducing tire pressures is actually uh, increasing the tire contact patch in, uh, itself, and um, the contact patch is uh, actually what makes the tire go warm. And warmer tires means more pressure because you know, the warmer you make it, you know, gas, it gets more, you know, yeah, it gains. Uh, what do you call it? Um, Volume, yeah. Yeah, yeah, volume, exactly. It blows <laughs> up a bit more. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what, I wa what I want you to do, uh, go and do is going on the setup page, and yeah. I need to take a look at the uh, variables that we can change. Yeah. So, we so, got the tires. Yeah. So, on the first line, on the uh, front um, tires, you have PSI toe, camber, and caster. This is like a full adjustment on a, you know, um, tire, you know, alignment setup. Yeah. So, so toe is actually, uh, if you're going uh, looking at a, a car top down, toe is actually uh, what makes the tires uh, go in a V shape or a reversed V shape shape. Uh, yeah, like this. I'm just showing it for the camera. <laughs> yeah. So camber is when you look at the car from the back. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the car from the back, it's uh, the same as the toe. It makes yeah. a V shape or a reverse V shape. Yeah, it's like how the tire is basically angled towards the road, right? Yeah, like if, like, like those stanced car, you know, show cars that have the angled wheels. That's like yeah. that camber. Yeah. You know, negative camber is uh, actually, uh, you know, the out uh, the lower parts of the tire are out. Uh, you know, more out. Yeah. And there's the caster. Caster is actually the uh, vertical angle of the uh, suspension, the coilover itself. Imagine okay. like a motorcycle, uh, the steering wheel of a motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, the angle of the uh, of steering the... wheel itself. Yeah, the fork, the front fork. Yeah, itself. the fork. It's like a, a little bit angled. It's not straight yeah. down. Yeah. It's like this. So this is the spring yeah. of the suspend, like the, the the angle of the the suspension to the tire. It's basically the angle of the steering itself as well, uh, okay. because the difference is uh, when you, uh, you know, uh, you you ride motorcycles yourself. You know, the, yeah, yeah. you basically might have known that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the more upright the forks on a motorcycle is, the more agile it is on the corners. You know, you can turn in faster. You you can brake later. You know, you know. Exactly, that's yeah. because uh, how the geometry of the uh, actual fork itself works 
But if you look at like cruisers, like big motorcycles <laughs> that you go on a road trip, they have a m longer nose and the angle is uh, way more aggressive. It's like yeah. more uh, horizontal. So th what that uh, does is is that makes the um, well, let's say motorcycle more planted and willing to go forward. It's uh, less agile, but it's more planted on the straight line. So it can handle more speed. It can uh, be more stable in the straight line and it will have less, you know, uh, tendency to spin out in the corners. Yeah. Okay. So, so... Uh, that's basically the tow camber and the caster. So PSI we... and the PSI itself is less like how yeah. much pressure is on the tire. So, so the thing now is that after you saw me for the first few laps and you took some notes and you saw what's happening, what, what is basically the first approach that you would like to do? The first so, thing? Uh, the first approach is, uh, well, actually, after I've seen your mechanical grip tab, uh, I there you like go, buddy. to... Yep. So, so here, just like... a quick update. You cannot change the wheel rate of the rear tires, only the oh, bump okay. stop rain, rate and not the bump stop range. Okay, so that makes a lot of uh, our work easier. So wheel rate awesome. itself <laughs> is actually the stiffness of the spring on the coilover. Yeah. In real life, if you want to change the wheel rate, you need to take off this entire suspension system and change the physical uh, spring itself. In a and game, it's just like a, you know, a, yeah, uh, a button click. and you start. And here, uh, just, you can only adjust it by three clicks. So from 10,400 down to 8,000, 88,000 to 78,000. Yeah. So one thing about wheel rate is uh, actually when you're uh, graph on your top uh, right and top left, yeah. there's a yellow line showing you up. And whenever changing, you yeah. change it, uh, the line goes either lower or higher yeah so what that means is uh the yellow line is actually the resting position for your suspension as okay, you can so see yeah when, when like the car when is basically car standing still yeah it's the car standing still okay. when you're actually uh rising the uh wheel rates uh you know increasing the wheel rate it goes up because this the spring is uh stiffer mm -hmm. and stiffer st uh, springs tend less to go under compression so your car's yeah. front uh, right height will be affected as well okay. so uh we need to uh you know focus first on the wheel rate itself then move to the right height uh itself because oh, it actually okay. affects the car okay cool and then the so basically if i make that, the wheel rate higher the car the right height higher, in front, yeah, front is a bit higher is, yeah okay yeah. Awesome. Uh, and another, uh, actually, that part uh, we realized it when setting the car up for Amir's race uh, because we were changing the wheel rate and uh, before, uh, after the change for the right height. And then when we get back to the right height, it's uh, a very complex thing because we look at it and then the right height is actually higher. The rake yeah. angle is different. So yeah, okay. So we are yeah. going to focus here on this page first. Yeah. So uh, basically, some of the some of the guys that are watching the stream are actually asking me on private messages that uh, to explain stuff. Um, uh, okay, guys, if you could just please ask all the questions in the chat for everyone to read, uh, it would yeah. be really good. Yeah, Please. someone uh, someone yes. asked that what is wheel rate? As I said, wheel rate is its actual its actual name is spring rate. Spring okay. rate is the stiffness, the amount of stiffness that your springs are. As you can see, is is for for example, right now it's at eighty eight thousand newton meters. That means. Uh, you need 88,000 uh, newtons to change yeah, to like press change it. the uh, height of that spring, press yeah. it, and so, shorten it by one meter. Basically meaning sense. not even the strongest man on the world could compress a spring that's set to this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just, just one thing in the middle, guys. There, there are no stupid questions. We, we are a beginner's community. We are trying to share all the information. So feel free to ask anything, uh, no matter how stupid you think it might be, because it might be even a question that I'm interested in. So please really 
share everything in the chat, everything that's on your mind. Uh, absolutely, to, to help everyone understand more. So yeah, uh, Adrian is saying they should have just named it Spring Raid. Yeah, <laughs> Kunos, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's you know the uh, the weird stuff. One of the weird stuff is that yeah they made it real rate because it made me made us actually think that hmm it's actually the wheel itself because yeah. the wheel contains the entire suspension system that that's what that i was thinking it has to do yeah, with the how strings, the wheel the is. dampers the you know everything itself but we tested it out and it's actually the yeah. uh, spring itself only yeah. the spring itself okay cool so uh what i'm going to do is uh we need uh, what was the default uh this is the rate? default so this was the default. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, the rule of thumb is that if you have stiffer suspension on the rear end of your car, you will have more rotation or let's say on oversteer. Your car is more tend to, you know, rotate and, you know, slide along. Yeah. And if you have, uh, you know, stiffer suspension up front of your car, then your car will have, uh, you know, more understeer because the front of your car is bouncing up and down so much that makes the uh car uh you know the tires not um you know connect to the road as much as needed yeah yeah just just in between what adrian is basically saying what i've been thinking since i got this game it's not very beginner friendly yeah yeah a yeah lot it's of the actually elements basically like that are not you know, explained yeah and, that, and that's that's why we are doing this that, that's why basically i started this channel because i was looking for all the information and there were so many complicated things all across thousands of different websites and videos and i thought let's just try and you know get it all together and learn together and that's how we ended up here Exactly. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, what, uh, I actually have a uh, training course for you know people who like to uh, yeah. do like uh, that kind of stuff. And they asked me about like how should we start? Where can we start? Where can where can we gain uh, experience without spending all that much of money? You know, going on real life uh, tracks and work on real cars. Mm. So basically, my um, suggestion is to play more arcade games yeah it might sound silly but it's actually a, a lot of helping you a lot because like for example a game like uh, gran turismo it's not as in-depth of a setup a setup that you uh going to have like in a asset of course yeah yeah but it yeah. can still help you kind of yeah get it an can help you because you need to you need to actually understand what that you know that uh, value does so you yeah. need to know what it what that 88,000 newton meters does because Before one thing that, for me yeah. is even that that some basic physics like like you just said you are braking and the car is diving in at the front and when you release the brakes and go on the throttle it dives in in the rear that was for example something that i coming from need for speed underground <laughs> absolutely had no idea about and that's like hmm a car is actually has actually way more moving parts and does way more things than people um, really uh, realize and that's what makes it so fascinating exactly like uh, for example even the uh, first speed underground 2 as uh, we all love <laughs> uh, it has a uh, you know a, a part of the game it is all about setting up the car when you you know take the car to the dyno you dyno tested it and you can change every bit a bit and piece of it and that's a an amazing place to start start setting yeah. up your car because it's not changing all that much on your car because uh you know there's not much uh you know um variables on the car in your setting uh your setup page uh that it's not in, in, there's no wrong answers in the uh arcade games yeah yeah you, you can change everything about it and you can just throw the car around the corner and it will turn but it's it's like either slower or faster but in a game like Assetto Corsa it's actually like a difference between undrivable and a very fast car yes, so that exactly. margin is a, a lot bigger okay. so the basic thing uh, I want people to know is actually that uh, understanding the uh, weight distribution and where the center of mass the uh, you know the center of gravity some might uh, might like to say 
is at on the car. So imagine there is a tray, you have a you know closed tray on you, and there is a ball on it. That yeah. ball is actually your center of gravity. Okay. So when you're accelerate, you're when you're accelerating, you're turning the uh, you know tray, you know uh, turning its nose a little bit up. So yeah, the like, ball rolls back. Yeah. So the if when the ball rolls back, that means you have more weight on the rear of your car. So that's basically like it. When you're braking, the ball rolls rolls all the way to the front, and yep. you have more weight towards the front of your car. So if you understand that, there's a lot of things you can save by just understanding and visualizing that. So, for example, what I'm uh, what I was saying er earlier is that when you're going up and down on the crests, you're actually when you're going up uh, and you're going to uh, head down. Yeah. The uh, weight is a little bit lifted all uh, off of all four wheels because it's like the car is jumping, you know, a little bit. It's not like jump, a real jump, but the weight is lifting from all of the tires. So what you need is because the car will uh, get back down and it will be a, a rather impact on the suspension. Yeah. Uh, you will need to uh, actually... Um, handle that uh with you know uh absorbing that pressure yeah yeah okay so i don't want I, I don't want to make it too complex i don't want to make it like all that complex for everyone to understand because it's like a yeah, short yeah. video rather short video but you know understanding this is that uh we need uh a little bit um you know more rotation but in a controlled manner so yeah, first thing yeah. I, I want to ask uh, Stefan to do is going on the tires yeah. and changing the rear toe yeah. to like 0 0.3 degrees. Whoa, that's quite uh, a no, lot. No, no, not uh, 0 0.13. I thought so. Yeah. That might be a hilarious outlet with 0 0.3. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, what I'm doing is forming a V shape. Hey, Fried. Or oh, Fried, uh, sorry. <laughs> so basically, what I've uh, told him to do is turn his rear wheels, if you will look top down from uh, on the car, yeah. make it like a form of more like a uh, opener V shape so on like, the rear tires. Yeah, so. So, like, you mean. Um, more like an A or more like a V? More like a V. Okay, so, so this more, way. Okay, so, yeah. So you know, more, uh, you know, negative toe is more like an A, and positive toe is like a V. Okay, that's cool. So uh, what that does is imagine going around the corner, and what that does is it actually acts like a, um, you know, of uh, let's say um a fixed rear wheel steering for your car okay so it's like a lift truck uh you know yeah the truck that um you know rotates with its rear wheels that's yeah, yeah. basically like that so i'm adding more um rotation to the back of your car so okay. your car is more tend to oversteer more tend to rotate so when you turn the you're turn, you're turning your uh, steering wheel, uh, your car is more pointier, so you have okay. to be a little bit more careful. But okay. there is a catch: in the straight <laughs> lines, in long races, you're wearing your tires, rear tires, to be more specific, more because okay. you're dragging your tires on the tarmac at more angle. Yeah, of course. So there's more friction and more tire yeah. wear. So it, it can it also result in like higher tire temperatures? It will actually. Yes. Okay, so we have to to keep an eye on that. That's yeah, very important. So that's to know. why that's why I, I was talking about you know the PSI when you're adjusting your PSI, you need to factor in all yeah. of these parts. So I did not change the rear PSI right now. I think I just yeah. adjusted the front by one or two clicks down because it was so high. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, so the so, rear end can be, you know, increased like by one click, maybe like. Maybe. Yeah, let, let I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Twenty-seven. So, it should be the limit. So. 
Let's yeah, just see yeah. what happens. So um, anything else in addition you would like to change now? Well, we need to move one by one because, you know, when you change uh, too many things at the same time, if anything goes wrong on a track, you will not have any clue that what causes okay. caused the problem. So I'm doing a few laps now. One, maybe, or maybe, let's, maybe let's say two or three laps. Yeah, I need to do an outlet to get the temperatures. So, uh, people might ask, uh, what do, what are we going to do with a, uh, you know, telemetry and where are we, when are we going to use that? Uh, That's yeah. basically, basically when we are going to, uh, when we're feeling too much confidence with the car that we can uh, say we can do our fastest laps, but we need to, uh, you know, confirm that the car is actually a at the, the shape, then we get uh, to you know work on our telemetry data. So it's basically after the initial uh, setups that we're doing. Yeah. Which it, maybe it might even be something for a separate live workshop. So let's see where we get today. So Adrian was uh, saying that similar logic to the F1 DAS system. Yes, oh, yeah. it's actually uh, the same logic because in the straight lines, they pull in the steering wheel. So the toe went to like a neutral toe position. So the cars didn't have uh, too much friction with the road. So they didn't lose their tire, uh, tire out that much. And when they're going into the corner, they push in the steering wheel, the toe gets a little bit more, uh, you know, V-shaped, it's a more positive toe. And when they turn their steering wheels, uh, it's actually uh, making the car corner in, the nose dives in faster. But what we did is actually we made the tail of the car rotate more. So the difference is here. The difference between front and front toe and rear toe is here. Yeah, so I hope the sound is okay if anyone like I don't know maybe Adrian can confirm in chat that he can understand you quite fine while I'm driving like a madman. <laughs> so even right now that we've changed just 0 0.02 uh, 0 0.03 degrees I can actually see the rear end of your car rotating more yep it feels better especially when you're accelerating out of the corner yeah and that was one of the big issues i had with the car actually yeah it's like when accelerating out of corners having massive understeer or like yeah. mid corner as soon as i started to accelerate yeah so what i'm actually telling uh, everyone in my classes and everyone I know, everyone that me about this, is that don't approach this setup thing as like it's a rocket science, okay? Just yeah. it's like normal basic stuff, basic knowledge. You know, you turn the wheels, it's going to turn your car. That's it. That's like the entire premise of the car. It gets in depth when you're combining everything together. So oh, that's why I'm saying like start with a uh, 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 arcade game. I messed up the last corner, um, but other than that, it would have been like seven tenths already quicker. Yeah. So I think we made a good first step. Probably. Let's just do another lap. Too late there. Uh. Yeah, so the, the other challenge still besides the setup is me being able to manage a proper race line. <laughs> Driving a race car is actually so hard. Um, yeah. I'm not going to even talk about it because I've never done any like uh, you know, serious racing, serious no. like race car driving. So I don't have enough experience to even talk about that. Sound is fine, awesome. Thanks Adrian, thanks Fried. I can't even imagine driving it. I was watching another video today of a German team, MC Chip. I don't know if anyone knows it here, but they, they are doing that with a Lamborghini in the ADSC GT Masters and they're trying to get to grips with it. 
and they're struggling so hard because there's so much to it like like we talk about with the setup and stuff right now and um i mean i can't when i watched them driving the car i was just i can't imagine driving a lamborghini that's probably valued at i don't know four or five hundred k i just can't imagine driving that and really pushing it to the limit you know well, insurance covers that a little bit but you know <laughs> but, uh, <I> mean, oh <laughs> screw yeah, it insurance <laughs> covers everything <laughs> <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, uh, professional racing is a very, very money-consuming and money-hungry sport. Yeah, it is. It might, it might, it might not sound uh, like all that crazy, but it's actually a lot of money that you need to spend on it. Yeah. So I'm trying to uh, observe other stuff, like at this time, at this point, that uh, we, I don't see a lot of things that I need to change, I start asking the driver, how does the car feel? What do you need to do with the car? Do you need uh, to yeah. or what? Okay. Um, let me think. Because <laughs> right now it feels really good. Even here through the corkscrew, did you see that? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is actually lowering your front wheel rates to absorb the um, exit on the corkscrew a little bit better so you can have you can carry a little bit more speed through the corner so the front of the car is not bouncing Ooh, look at the time now we have a proper exit yeah oh nine tenths almost one second of one thirty one eight okay so Shit, now I raised the bar really high. <laughs> I think yeah. that's my fastest. 131.9 was my previous record. Okay, so uh, do this out lab. I'll watch the car, how the car feels, and then we can do a little yep. bit of change. I yeah, mean, it, a little bit more change to the car. It really has uh, at some point more to do with how good I am able to manage to stick to the ideal race line, you know, and to the braking markers. But, um... Yeah, um, for, for example, like, uh, when working with Amir, Amir, you know, everyone knows, everyone who knows Amir, that he is an absolute alien when it comes to driving cars, you know? With the equipment uh, that he has. Yeah, like, he, he hits, like, the perfect optimal racing line every time, no matter what happens to the car and it's just like, insane. that's like absolutely amazing yeah yes absolutely crazy so it was like it was challenging us more you know us that change it changed the parameters on the car because we knew that amir is doing it it's everything is fine yeah it's us that we need to do the uh, changes crazy okay so so basically what i observe Ooh. is that your uh, rotation is fine but you have a little bit of a body roll body roll is actually uh, when your car tilts from left to right for example when you're turning right your uh, car is tilting to the left okay so what that makes the car do is that the inside tires will lose their um, you know contact patch to the road a little bit okay and it push it, uh, you know, puts more pressure on the outside tires. So what I'm going to do is actually increasing your rear uh, anti-roll bar. Yeah. Like it's maybe like two, maybe right now. Yeah, that's yeah, the maximum. That's the maximum. <laughs> so uh, one thing that I need to uh, tell people about anti-roll bars, uh, like as you can see. There is like three options, zero, one, one and two. That yeah. means there are three holes on your anti-roll bar, or like the ends of the anti-roll bar. So it, it's like a real bar of metal? Or... Yeah, it's, it, it is actually a real bar of metal that is uh, fixed to your chassis on okay. with their like two anchor points. And the either end of that bar is uh, connected to your uh, swing arms the actual okay. swing arms of the car. Okay. And um, 
when you're like uh, changing it from zero to one to two, you're actually changing the connecting points of the swing arm to the bar itself. Okay. And right now the, uh, you know, two is the stiffest anti-roll bar is actually where uh, it's like uh, the closest uh, hole on the anti-roll bar to the front of the car. So you're making it stiff, you know, it's like, a, it's like, uh, you know, um, we have something um, like when uh, in school that they're telling me uh, the uh, rocking game that uh, kids play on playgrounds. Do you know that? I don't really remember the name, the you know, the, game. yeah, yeah. The um, kids sit on either side of the bar. And oh, you mean this like, one where they are like, ee? yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that thing i forgot this name but actually anti-roll bar works just like that for example if you have a uh, you know heavy boy sitting on one side of it yeah you, you can basically launch the several... person on the other side to the moon <laughs> yeah <laughs> like if you need either several um uh, you know lighter kids on the other side to yeah, you know like pull this, down the pull him down. thing yeah or the lighter kid sits closer to the pivot point of the uh that rocking like playground thing okay so yeah. if he sits closer to the pivot point that means the heavier kid's weight will get you know covered up by his uh distance from the pivot point mm -hmm. so right now uh, when we're uh making the anti roll bar on two that means we're uh you know putting the bolts you know, connecting the anti-roll bar to the swing arm as close as possible to the pivot point of the anti-roll bar itself. Okay. And that makes it in turn a bit stiffer. Yeah, it's actually a lot of, uh, it's actually stiffer, yes. Okay, cool. So, uh, by making your rear suspension stiffer, by making your rear, uh, rear of your car roll a little bit less, that means we're going to have a uh you know more contact patch to the rear of the car and that means you're going to have more rotation on your car mm -hmm. on the back of your car that means your car is going to either slide or you are going to have you know a little bit more oversteer okay so that's one thing uh the other thing that i want to do is changing the front wheel rates as it's actually the spring rates I want you to rates, lower yeah. them and make them as soft as possible. It's just one click to 78. Yeah, it's like 78,000. So, so what I'm what, doing is yeah. I'm making your uh, front springs softer. Uh, so which means when braking, it pushes the car down more in front, right? Yeah, the car will gain more rake. The yeah. rake is the difference between right side on, up front and up on the rear, on the back of the car uh you know the difference is called rake yeah uh so so what we do is we put more basically aerodyne well let's let's say we put more mechanical grip on the front by we are making that. the front uh actually uh softer so yeah, it so. uh, actually catches more of the bump out of the corkscrew when you're going down your nose oh. diving to the ground Okay. So your tires are going to, you know, absorb the pressure a little bit more softer. That that being said, your nose will uh, bounce around a little bit less. Okay. So you can have, you know, a more speed coming out of the uh, out of the corkscrew, and your car is not going to, you know, jump all over the place. Okay. Sounds good. So. Uh, so that's the other thing. Uh, how about the anti-roll bar up front? How much uh, anti-roll bar do we have up front? Same so it's two. two clicks, yeah. So keep it at zero right now. And let's go to the dampers. I want to see what do we have on the dampers. You can just change bump and rebound. So, okay. So bump is compression of the dampers. Rebounds, uh, rebound is actually um, the dampers, you know, opening up when, yeah. uh, actually so increasing like their length and rebound yeah just showcasing it for the camera <laughs> yeah so uh the difference with gt3 cars is gt3 cars have fast bump and fast rebound 
Yep. The difference is like I'm not going to uh, extreme details on that because it's a long story on its own. That's like a whole uh, new different chapter. Yeah, it's like it's a whole new different chapter. But the difference is uh, the bump, uh, the value of the bump is how much the uh, front dampers can you know take, how much pressure can they take, they okay. can they handle before compressing. But fast okay. bump is how fast that compression is going to happen. So like, yeah. You know, the Because fast... basically the, 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 the spring is constantly bump, handling bump and rebound, right? Because the road is not flat. So yeah. you're constantly compressing and rebounding, compressing and rebounding, and it's either slower or faster depending on your speed. Yeah, but the fast bump and fast rebounds actually happen when you're under braking or acceleration or heavy like loads on you know them you know they're like compressing a lot yeah for example like uh the off-road uh trophy trucks that you know travel around like <laughs> oh, they are uh, awesome. i don't know like maybe you know hundreds of miles an hour yeah. on you know gravel they have very very high fast bump because basically they have a high bump high bump value but they have a very high fast bump as well it yeah. can take a lot of force in it at, uh, but it travels as a, a ve in a very high rate of speed, so yeah. it goes yeah, yeah, in yeah. and out su super fast. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is because we're coming out of the corkscrew and we softened up the um, the front. actual front, we need to increase your front bumps by only one click. So like that's 11. like the slightest improvement on the slightest. We were going to stiff up the, um, you know, front dampers yeah. by a slightest bit because we don't want to, uh, you know, the front of the car to jump around, but we don't want the front bumper to scrape on the ground as well. Yeah, yeah. So because we just, of want, to, we just want the front dampers to take it, like take the pre take the you know beating yeah, yeah. and just move on. So, so just for explaining, like we we softened the springs. The springs are basically what goes around the dampers, right? The damper yeah, is the yeah. the rod in the spring, which yeah. basically takes the bumping and rebounding. So because we made this the, the springs softer, we have to, you know, make the bump to take over some of the job. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to mechanical grip, there is a visual representation itself. Yeah. There is a spring Just like the, uh, the uh, coil thingy going around the yeah. uh, actual uh, like that cylinder itself. The yeah, picture the itself. I don't know damper. if you can see the um, shape itself. Yeah, you yeah. see the spring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. see it. Like, yeah, the spring is The line around. inside of it is representing the damper itself. Like, yeah it's not a line it's like a piston but it's like very uh much yeah. like a narrow piston okay so that's it that's it for like that's it for this. now yeah that's it for now off we go i have to do the hard work again <sighs> <laughs> yeah so keep in mind i still have not changed anything about the aerodynamics of the car yeah because the aerodynamics of the car is heavily dependent of the right height of the car yep Especially here in GT4, where you can only adjust the rear wing and front and rear right head. Exactly. So, um, anyone watching, use the time uh, to post some questions in the chat now that I have to drive and we got some time maybe. Yeah. While Ian is watching, so just feel free to ask whatever. We have Armin saying it's the only game you're good at it. I don't know if he means me or you. <laughs> Good. You have to be so careful because the car feels so different when the tires are fresh and cold. Yep. Uh, be more careful when the tires are warm as well because the car is um, turning in more aggressive. I mean, honestly, it already feels better right now turning in on this quick left hander there. Now we are coming up to the infamous corkscrew <laughs> I think I missed the point there but that felt fine yeah because the front end didn't bounce around like yeah. because of the soft spring of front 
So we are basically turning the car from a low rider to a race car. <laughs> basically, maybe. You know, the, the uh, crazy thing about setting up a car uh, for a race, uh, and basically the part that I hate the most, is that you need to set the car up for each track, each temperature, each time, and each weather differently. Like, you yeah. need to start from basic, from scratch, like, like dead on blank sheet of paper. You don't have yeah. anything to work with. Like, if, for, for example, if it's like, 10 degrees colder, uh, or maybe like 10, even 10 degrees hotter, we need to start from scratch, like that's it, like, we need yeah. to start over. Is it the, does the GT4 Mercedes also have these uh, anti-dive yep. front stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it basically? So, what, what's so uh, special about that? Anti-dive system is, you know, a Mercedes AMG GT4 has basic uh, dual uh, wishbone suspension but there's uh, the engine up front like it's uh, more on the front of the car so when you're braking the front of the car is going to you know squat a little bit lower so what mercedes benz uh, have has done is actually they uh, put a uh, another you know let's say spring up front of the car which is called anti-dive system oh yeah when you're braking, it takes the uh you know the uh, increase in uh, rear right height and connects it to the front of the car and forces the front of the car to keep its right height it's basically like a like an anti-roll bar for you know the front and uh, rear of the car yeah, that's interesting so uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Mercedes-Benz on this part of the, uh, you know, uh, stuff because of racing and everything. Because, you know, Mercedes-Benz is a little bit too sensitive on setup side uh, and it's a little bit too over-engineered. So what that means is uh, that if we change any value on the car, it will definitely affect how the car drives. Okay. For example, as you can see, we just increased one bar, one click on ah. the anti-roll bar system, and uh, Stefan is having a hard time around the corners. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian is having all the fun. Yeah, the rear end of the car is going all over the place. But yeah. it's not, I don't think it's too much over here. Is it like too much or is it like... Man, like not all that much, but it, it's there. No, I think one of the mistake was just mine that I was going off track with the rear tire, and the other one, I don't know, felt was a surprise. Let okay, me try so again. I believe that it's um, it's a little bit too stiff. I, that's what I can observe from viewing your car. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just try to do a proper lap again because so far none of the laps have been clean so adrian said uh the anti-dive system allows you to run very extreme rake because the rake that results from braking or acceleration is es essentially not existence yes that's exactly what it does you know i like more uh simple cars like you know the lamborghini even though, yeah, it might sound like uh, counterintuitive because Lamborghini is basically an Audi R8 with different <laughs> body and everything, but no, it's not that. It's not the case because Audi R8 itself is a little bit more on the side of supercars. Oh, I cut it left-hander. Yeah. But what I have to say is the corkscrew feels much better. I so feel like I'm more in control. Yeah, the corkscrew is basically because of front uh, wheel weight. That's it. Like the uh, real anti roll bar is not corkscrew at, at all. And we are looking quite well on tire pressures. 
Damn, I think my 131.8 was a really good lap. But I think we can go faster because I see a lot of um, potential in this car still. Okay. You know, the Mercedes AMG GT3 car actually is a perfect car for, you know, um, competitive driving. So, you know, the drivers who want to, you know, become the fastest driver on the track, they usually use AMG GT3 because uh, the way really? you can set the car up it's so in-depth and it's so, uh, you know, there are so many variables on the effective variables, let's say, that uh, make the car, you know, become an absolute missile on the track if you set yeah. it up correctly. Adrian just said it, the Mercedes eats curbs for breakfast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the Bentley does that as well. Uh, Bentley is because uh, the chassis from actually from Porsche. Porsche oh. is, yeah, it's actually using the same platform as the Porsche Panamera. They are all cheating. <laughs> they are buying German engineered stuff just to be quicker. What does that say about them? You know, the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, uh, the new actually using AMG engine and platform as well. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you know, companies are giving each other some stuff. I mean, to, uh, for, for me, just for explanation why maybe people think like, oh, they, he improved the setup, so why isn't he getting any faster? Is that for me, it's really a challenge to adjust to changes of the car. And so right now it took me four laps to do a proper lap at the same, you know, same time. And from time to time, I'm... I'm just struggling a bit because the car behaves a bit differently now and I just need time to adjust. It's just my... I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not just the driver because, uh, you know, actually uh, setting up a car like this, like the way that I'm approaching the setup of the car, it's actually uh, experiment. It's like uh, yeah. testing each uh, part of the car and changing it, see it, if it works or not. So, so I'm your guinea pig. What? I'm your guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. Your lab rat. <laughs> so you know, um, the car is actually going on its limits, which is um, probably a good thing and a bad thing. It's, a, it's actually a double, uh, it's a double -edged sword. Yeah. So. What I'm going to do next is changing the uh, rear dampers on the car. So basically, what I need to look at uh, look at right now is how you get in, into the corners and where do you have more oversteer. Okay. Oh, so so um, on the entries or on the exits. So should I head back into pits or continue? Um, maybe another lap, like, but, okay. you know, focus more on the corner inside of your car. See where your car is going to lose its uh, balance. Is it on the brakings? Is it on the, uh, or on the accelerations? Okay. So, yeah, it's on Power the slides. <laughs> just just on the, the first corner. <laughs> But I'm really trying to push it. I think I might be able to be a bit more gentle on exit, but... It doesn't need to be like that always, because I can see the car is a little bit too stiff on the back. Like, a little bit. So that one so click... Was, yeah, if it was on the, uh, if it was the um, GT3 cars, we could just, uh, you know... Um, because it's on the exits, uh, we could use the fast Whoa. one for... Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was my mistake. Yeah. So basically, if it was on the GT cars, we could use some you know, fast bump or fast rebound reduction or increase to handle that situation. Yeah. And since you're losing the car on the exit, actually you're accelerating, the ball of weight of the car is rolling back to the back of the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to the dampers. Okay. Uh, dampers. Yeah, yeah.
<laughs> yeah. I was trying to do it with the steering wheel, but sometimes <laughs> okay. it works, you know, sometimes it won't. Yeah, so uh, because we're accel accelerating, uh, the rear end of the car is compressing, but it's yeah. a little bit, the bump of it is a little bit too high, so it makes the car uh, feel a little bit too, you know, Stiff. nervous. No, so nervous, we okay. Need to, yeah, the, uh, the bump is, the piston is actually too stiff. So we need okay. to lower the rear bump. Yeah. Maybe like by, uh, let's say, let's say two clicks to be safe. Like, yeah, let's do two clicks to be safe. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the air part. I want to see uh, what do we have to change here. So we have uh, adjustable front and rear right height. Yes. Both are at the limit right now. I know, I know. Uh, are they? Uh, are we able to change them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we so can change, change front. Yeah. We can change rear. We can change rear wing as well. Okay. So let's keep them uh, like how they are for now. Okay. But the car is running on a weird rake, so we need a higher rake. But let's keep it like that and hit the track again. Okay. So the only thing we changed now was the rear bump. Rear bump, yeah, the rear bump on the damper part of it. So at this point, we still do don't have uh, the um, you know enough okay. confidence to say it's actually uh, good to you know take telemetry data out of it, and run a good lap. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's not at that point yet. Oh, Adrian wrote something cool in the chat again about um, endurance racing. Yeah, yeah. So something about endurance racing and uh, higher lap count races is that we set the car in a way that uh, because the tires are getting worn uh, uh, as the time goes by, uh, we set the car up in a way that the loss of grip actually helps the car rotate more. Ooh. That's that's why uh, that's why like in some uh, you know serious races or like some even you know, uh, some even as the course races you can see the drivers do their fastest lap laps on the end of the races. Yeah. The coast. That's because they set the uh, set the car in a way that uh, you know the tires when they're like having their optimum grip. It's like a little bit more understeery, and when they lose their uh, grip by like the tire wear and everything, the car goes into the right uh, rotation that they need. Which is really interesting. I mean, why would you set it up like that? Why wouldn't you want to be like faster in the beginning? Uh, because you know, in the beginning, there's a lot of traffic into. You know, break more. You know, worry about someone on the, your behind. Are they going to die from on you, or are they, are, they, oh, uh, yeah, okay. are they going to do anything crazy on you? So it's basically like uh, take a uh, slow in and fast out type of race. You know, you try to play it safe. Adrian, that's what we are actually trying to do, to have like a race set up, but let's see if that works with the time we have. It also is good enough if we just can find a balance for the car and be quick. So in the first sector it felt bad as well and now I messed up corner entry again. little bit of sliding but we are you know, not quite uh, there with the temperature so yeah man, probably so adrian uh you said some pretty amazing uh like in your uh second uh message uh the consistency is the actual key of a race if you want to be fast you need to be fast the entire race 
yeah. you can't be fast in like one or two laps because you can't predict everything because uh, you know there might be a crash in front of you someone might like dive bomb you someone might crash into you so you need to be fast all over the track so uh, you know the uh, professional teams take the safer approach most of the time they try to be fast towards the entire uh, race not only on the first few laps oh. I'm struggling a little bit now so the car is understood right no I'm just struggling a bit with my concentration <laughs> okay. I'm just missing breakpoints sorry That's it about endurance racing, you know, you need endurance for yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, um, physical training is, like, the key for the car, because drivers, I believe, they lose, like, five kilos of hydration on their body yeah. just because of the pressure. The, yeah. The peer pressure of, on their bodies. It's insane. I mean, I even feel it here in the sim rig because of the way yeah. the force feedback is and the thing is the force feedback that I have set up now for the GT3 car is way harder in the GT4 so I'm even struggling more right now than I do with the GT3 car maybe GT4 there's something cars to are more closer to real life cars that's yeah. why I like them so much uh, and you know real life you know Real cars, street cars, are not said to be the fastest around the track. So what happens is, actually, feel more pressure inside a uh, street car on a track rather than a race car on a track, because yeah. a race car on a track is super fast, like the amount of. Oh. Oh. That's what happens <laughs> when you when you hit the sand trap. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, um, let's just let's just let's just jump to the pits and you know do some yeah, uh, other I'll, changes as well. Yes, I'll just I'll just do a minute break because I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So just one minute, guys. <laughs> Drink, stay hydrated, and go to the bathroom, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be right back. At this point that you're gone. Uh, way i'm going to talk with people i'm, I'm going to yeah you can you game. can people can still continue ask questions and ian will uh, gladly answer them yeah just ask 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 anything you want about the car uh what part of the car yeah. does what and what so i'm just back in in one two minutes guys okay so basically next next thing i'm going to do with his rake angle uh, by increasing his uh, rear right height and then uh, you know changing the front right height as well. Right now, the right height of his car, uh, the rear end of the car, is actually lower than the front, and that's not really a good thing because it's a um, positive. It's actually a negative rake, which means uh, the air is getting trapped underneath the car and in like straight lines lifting the front of the car up a little bit more than it should be uh so what i'm going to do is re uh, to rear uh, raise the rear end of the car but what that does to his car is uh, is that it's actually going to add a little bit more rotation to his car so the car he is going to have a little bit more oversteer so what I'm going to do is uh, reducing back the rear anti-roll bar and increasing the rear right height instead because the car is still a little bit, you know, uh, uneasy on the corners, I feel like. So <laughs> you guys don't have any questions. I'm a little bit, uh, you know, worried because... Don't you have any questions about anything on this like page and anything? So the next thing that um, I think that people need to know is that um, 
on this exact page that we're in, there is a reading called IMO. It's inside, middle, and outside. It's actually the uh, amount of tire wear of the car. It's actually the amount of pressure of the uh, pressure that is on the car. Uh, it's actually the temperature, but <laughs> I'm to, uh, I'm going to talk about you know uh, what causes this thing to happen. So as you can see, the IMO on the front right is 96 on the inside, 92 on this middle of the tire, and 89 on the outside. So what that does mean? Uh, what that means is that. Uh, uh, what that means is that like the inside of is having uh, you know more contacts with the ground itself so that means that we have a little bit too much camber so we need to reduce that same with the rear tires and So, uh, Stefan, uh, in the time that you were away, I told, uh, you know, people that we need to uh, reduce your rear uh, anti-roll bar again, like, by, like, one click, turn it back to where it was. And instead of that, we're going to increase your rear right height to add a little bit more rake, you know, to counter uh, counteract the... Uh, reduction of the entire roll bar on the back. So, any questions, anyone? So I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Uh, what range from I to O is acceptable? Well, probably the I M O to be like as close as possible together. But if you want, like you know, if you're going too aggressive on the uh, camera and, uh, setups and everything, it's probably from like maybe like one or two units difference between each other. Hawthorne Cottage Craft. I find the pressure sometimes went away. Uh, I don't really get that. What is? What do you mean by like uh, pressure is going away? Like when you're away? Because if you're uh, if you're uh, saying that you find your tire pressures uh, are a little bit too low, that means that you need to at the first uh, at first you need to increase your tire pressure itself. But if you're seeing that your car is losing the tire pressure, that means uh, the actual tires themselves are not in a way that they're like under any pressure. So they're losing their, uh, you know, heat and their uh, temperature. And that's usually happening because you're maybe going a little bit too slow. So. Uh, more camber means that you're uh, actually wearing the inside of your tire a little bit more. 
So more camber is like your uh, tires are grinding more on the inside of them. Uh, but like more positive camber means like the uh, tire is more like flat on the ground, like it's like more upright. Okay, I'm back again. Okay, I thought I, I thought you were back when you started the uh, like replay. No, I was just switching it on because I thought if I'm staying away for two minutes, it would get boring. Yeah. So uh, when you were you realized that something you need to do is actually two things. First thing is you need to lower your uh, rear um, anti-roll bar. Okay. So, you know, one turn it click. Back to one, yeah, like turn it back to one, and instead you're going to increase your rear right height because you need more rake. Okay. You know, increase it like it's one hundred three on the front, like make it like one ten on the back, like pretty aggressive. One hundred ten. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because uh, aggressive rakes actually uh, help a lot. So another thing that I realized uh, is that uh, go to the tires tab. Yes. I was explaining to uh, the viewers that uh, if you like turn your uh, tires back to like uh, what they were before, like the old tires, I want to uh, I want the reading on the IMO. The old tires. Have you changed them or no? It, it just reset it. It's yeah, up. it resets every time. Wait. I went out with the number twos. The number ones are still fine. Yeah. Okay, Oops. so if not, so if not, uh, just do a several several laps uh, because I feel like that your uh, camber is a little bit off. The rear camber. Uh, both front and. Both. Rear. Okay. Oh yeah, we did not change the cambers. Yeah, right? we, we did not change the camber. Yeah, and I was looking at the uh, reef. Okay, so, so just, yeah. I'm just gonna save that. Yeah. Ah. Chupi chupi chu. So awesome, I saw there were some questions. Thank you very much guys for asking questions. Thank you Ian for taking the time to take over the stream. <laughs> You're welcome. Good. Low tire pressure. Stay clear of the curbs. I'm not afraid of curbs. I'm really it... interested to see how the KTM, uh, how the KTM races on the track. Oh my god! I love the car so much. He's, I, uh, I had some KTM yesterday on the practice server and I just joined him for his cockpit view and it's just so hilarious. Because the car sounds like, I don't know, it sounds hilarious. It's like... Yeah, it's, it's, a small, it's a small high revving ore banger. Thing. And it looks like you're driving in a shoebox where they fit in some, you know, tubing so you have a roll cage. <laughs> But, so I what, but I love it because it's super like super lightweight. Yeah. So what I am already noticing, Ian, is the car is massively oversteering. Well, let's see about that because I raised the rear end of your car by a lot, like yeah, so much. Well, I just said massively to put it in perspective because it's now really extreme on the colder tires. Yeah. So I have to be very very careful. So wow. that's what we, that's actually what we, uh, uh, cars, we put the extreme brake on first and then move like, uh, move forward to the, uh, doing everything else. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, um, Adrian is also commenting. Yeah, yeah. So they eliminated the understeer, yeah. Yeah, basically it's just the, just like the, uh, tray principle that I, Told you guys, it's because the car is tilting more toward the front, uh, toward, towards the front, 
the weight tends to go more to the front of the car. And when you're braking, the rear end of the car gets a lot like you know, uh, lighter than ever, so the car gets into oversteer a lot. It's basically exactly yeah. like that tray thing that I told you. When you tilt it forward, the ball rolls over. I really need to like, wow, adapt a lot right now because I was so used to like steer it in a lot and just throw it in and now it's like if I do that it feels like I'm gonna lose the car. <laughs> uh, so I need a bit of time to adapt to that. It, uh, okay. it feels really massively different now. So is it massively different in a good way or a bad way? Neither. Oop. It's... It, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I can't really tell you. Right now I'm struggling a bit. So but when, that's just that a second clip. Yeah, in, in that situation that means the driver uh, is experiencing a lot of unwanted oversteer, that means you raise uh, the rear end a lot, a lot of it too much. So just do uh, like another couple of laps and yep. then we can like have a chat about how the car feels then. It turned in really well there. In there as well. Holy crap. If I know what the car does when I give the steering input and I can, you know, anticipate it, then it's easier to control. Yeah. You know, the good thing with Mercedes is that it can take a lot of, like, input. It can take a lot of input on its own, uh, on it, so... Yeah. It's all up to the driver and the car in a way that it can does the best it can do. Oh, oh, wrong line. line. It, was a, it was an amazing lap, though. You were at 30. Uh, I, I was starting to get a feeling, yeah. I was on a good lap. Oh, damn it. So do you want to do you want it to be a little bit more forgiving or? Um, I think now I was really completely off the line into 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 the corkscrew, right? Shall we just try it again? I don't know. It's up to you. Like, if do you feel confident that you? Can yeah, work? I want to try it again because that was just three laps. Okay. Let's give the viewers some entertainment of of me struggling. <laughs> yeah. Hawthorne says, "I think you're driving more smoothly now." <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what I immediately feel is now with the fresh, I I, okay, the, I the, the game just gave me completely fresh tires. But okay. No problem. So, I already feel it. It might sound stupid, but I already feel it when exiting the pits. <laughs> and then this first corner, the car just dives in. It's a massive difference. It's like as soon as I lift the brake, the car really dives into the corner. That's how to describe it best. Yeah. So Uncle Bill, uh, I asked that uh, is the reason that they're uh, not using brake percentage on uh, GT4 cars just like GT3. Uh, I I don't think that is like a uh, real because uh, they're trying to uh, you know clear up the uh, GT4 setup page to make it more beginner friendly. I believe so. Because you know, not so many people understand what are, what those numbers are saying. Yeah, and I think it also says because they're kind of advertising the GT4 cars that they are not as aero um, depending or not have so much downforce and aero options like the GT3s. Yeah, um, because when we were uh, setting up GT3 car, uh, we used a lot of that uh, percentage on our calculations, so. Probably, I believe that it's actually for making it, you know, looking more easy than GC3 cars. Maybe, yeah. 
because you know that's just like the difference between front end the front end of the car and the rear end of the car like that's just a difference in percentage you know like the high difference in percentage jesus focus just still trying to comprehend what the changes have done to the behavior of the car <laughs> It definitely feels better into this corner. So when first we try to set the car up for the entire track itself, then when we finished up like making it, uh, you know, just to each and every uh, like corner of the track, then we start to change bits and pieces depending on each corner. Like for example, like maybe Stefan says, okay, I'm, I'm experiencing a little bit of a, you know, understeer on this corner. Then we start to change like a little bit of things, like one click or two clicks on maybe some part of the car to make it like corner better in that specific corner. Yeah. To avoid like changing the behavior on the other corners of the track. I also need to look at other brake markers because I'm afraid that in the race on Thursday people will just clean off the little markers, the little boards with the numbers on it. <laughs> and the track doesn't really have much of any visual clues. You have to be so gentle with the braking and accelerating through that corner. And then you have this one which is... If you just brake a bit too early it's so understeery through that corner. Uh, if you brake a little too late I mean. And this one is just throw it in. time the corkscrew feels m massively yeah I, I have the feeling that i have understeering through this corner now but i think i'm just not driving it properly maybe might be too quick through the down left you know after the corkscrew let's just do it one more time properly yeah maybe another maybe another lap and then if it didn't change, that means like the car is unbalanced. I hit the sausage and I didn't hit the wall, look at that. You lost a lot of time there. Yeah, yeah, of course, I was going through the sand pit. Okay, I think I need to break a bit earlier there. I just, I the car handles very direct but i immediately notice now when i'm too late on brakes or too quick into a corner you know okay so maybe like and let's go to the pits and like turn down the, the rotation a bit that might yeah. help a lot because you know the car it maybe is like too twitchy on it's like it's so much on its toes Okay. And it requires a lot of, you know, uh, experience to drive in a such car like like this. In such, you know, so it needs. To yeah. Yeah, we might need to like turn it down a little bit. 
So right now it would drive really quick if a more experienced driver would take over the wheel. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, okay, I get it. So that's why we need to make the car a bit more user-friendly. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Because at the end of the day, uh, the driver driving, it's not like the fast, it might, might not be the fastest driver in the world, it might not be the most experienced driver in the world. Yeah. So you need to adapt to, okay. you know, set the car for the best, uh, you know, you know, the most user-friendly of them yeah. all. So the corkscrew so, will really be a deal breaker on Thursday for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, yeah. So basically go on the arrow. Uh, uh, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. Hawthorne just said it because Aris had an interesting stream again where he said, like, it, it's uh, setting up the car for the hardest corner because um, that's where the car needs to perform and the rest is then easy. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, it's actually uh, basically like you start from there and then move down to uh, yeah. you know, more basic stuff. That's a good point. So one thing that I'm uh, seeing right now is that you have a lot of uh, IMO difference in your front. Uh, what what IMO? IMO, yes. Inside, middle, and outside. Of the oh, okay. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's big, like the big... inside of the tire, middle of the tire, and outside of the tire. Okay, yep. It's like, um, like pretty much the temperature of inside and middle and the outside. So uh, what you need to do is to like lower your camber. That's like really interesting. I actually never looked at these numbers. I don't know if any of my viewers know what this means or have ever looked at that. So that's really interesting. Here, the actually the front left has a lower outside temperature than inside. And on the yeah. front rear, it's actually, yeah, it's the same, but even higher temperature. So that means there's more pressure on the right side, right? Yeah, that's actually uh, because it's, actually it's all like left-handers. Uh, yeah, it's like a more left-hander of a uh, track. That's like one thing that we uh, talk about a lot. Like mm -hmm. that's why, that's why uh, NASCAR cars have like a fin on one side of their bodies. If you like, if anyone like just looked at those oh. cars, yeah, they have a fin on one side of their car because they need only. Uh, to like pu push down the car on one side because it's like, just like a left-hander oval or right-hander oval. I actually never paid attention to that. That's cool. Has <laughs> any anyone ever noticed that? <laughs> awesome. Okay. So what we have now is like the inside of the tire. When you have the tire like that, and that's like a, a, the inside here is getting hotter than the outside. So we should adapt that, right? Is there like any rule of thumb for that? Should uh, it be for equal what? for the temperature? Um, well, it's better for it to be equal, but you know, when you want to push the car, uh, it's uh, actually standard to have like yeah. maybe one or two. Oh, Adrian has to leave us. Adrian, thank you so much for joining in for asking the questions. Um, I hope I'll see you in the race on Thursday. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay, c continue. Okay, uh, so uh, it's actually. Um, better to have similar inside middle and outside uh, like okay. temperature differences but because you want you know if you probably want to push the car a little bit more than it can you want to have like maybe like one or like maximum two degrees of difference on inside yeah, middle and yeah, outside. yeah okay so this is like massive this here is six degrees yeah difference. this is like this yeah is seven. The six, de six degrees of difference is a lot that means you're losing a lot of your grip Oh, okay so that might be that like for example after the corkscrew into the down left i would i might be struggling more with grip and have the feeling the car is under steering because the tire just can't build up the grip to take me through the corner well basically it's because of your camber because you know the uh, your tires are a little bit too much camber yeah uh, so we need like to straight yeah straighten it up a little bit like, so like it's this. like minus four uh you might need to like increase it to like mm, minus 3.5 maybe like or maybe though yeah like 3.6 3.6 is okay enough. left and right mm, yeah for for now like let's say left and right okay and uh about the um about the uh caster well can't really decide for now but for the uh rear end of the car camber let's say like it's 
two degrees and like let's say three degrees on the inside so maybe like make it like um minus 2.8 yeah minus 2.8 is good okay uh and did we uh decrease the rear right height no we're still on 110 <laughs> we, yeah like make it 105 oh really no it was so much fun <laughs> Okay, like make it 107. <laughs> Let's see. If you just... feel, if you feel confident enough, so like like make make it higher. Yeah, it's just all about me really needing some time to adapt. I mean, honestly, the way if, if I would do that on my own, I would probably do a change and then do 20 laps until I really know that I can't get any quicker. But that's just that would just yeah. Yeah. Result it, in too much time right up, now. Setting up setting up a car uh, is. A consuming setup so i i don't know how it is with you guys uh, uh uh just watching my stream right now but me i really need i'm not i'm a quick learner but when it comes to you know taking something and put it into action after i learned it it just it just takes time <laughs> it's actually basically the same for everyone it's not like it's yeah. not just you it's everyone everyone needs to do that because you know when you learn something you need to master that uh skill that you've learned yeah so it takes time that you need to practice so should i now take the same tire set like before or a fresh one no take a fresh one take a fresh okay. one and um there was one another thing that i might want to change but i know i was it forgot something what with it. the mechanical grip oh so, uh, i wanted i wanted to um say uh, explain something to people okay. um I go ahead really, i don't really remember it right now but... okay since we're on the mechanical grip tab uh so let's talk about steering ratio and preload differential so steering ratio is basically uh is how much the front tires will turn given the amount of steering yeah. input you're uh, you're having so uh, the, the, the the would it mean then the lesser the steer ratio the lesser you have to turn the wheel or the more uh, yeah if you if you like um make the steering ratio go more you have to uh move the steering wheel more to oh. have the tires steer uh, your, your front tire steer okay more. that's when you know you have like so pr so much like more precise type of uh track that you need to like accurately position your car on the oh, okay. I understand uh, track it. you want to you know uh, make like very small movements okay. you like increase the steering ratio and the preload differential is actually uh the differential lock on the back of the car yeah so what that means is the higher uh preload that you have on the differential that means uh your uh basically your rear tires are locked together yeah. like uh, we've all seen in um, probably in every school they've told this to kids and uh, hmm. they. I actually to... I actually linked a, a video in my Discord uh, and on my Facebook, which is I think from the 40s or the 50s in black and white, and it absolutely amazingly showcases and explains what a differential does. So yeah, I would really recommend yeah, yeah. anyone watching that because it's really it's basically actually really simple, but it's hard to explain but it's simple yeah. to understand it's just hard yeah. to really showcase and, that. It's, and it's actually pretty uh basic thing to know in cars because you know when you think about it when you realize it that yeah very simple thing that i didn't even know it's about. like it's like when when your car goes into a corner and let's say you go into a left corner the outside tires have to um make more distance because they are on the outside they have a longer They're way traveling to go more on they are, they are on a exactly uh, bigger radius of a corner yeah and when you increase the differential yeah. lock it just means they cannot move as they should yeah right? that means you have more rotation that means your car is going to slide more yeah so and basically drift cars have locked differentials they welded the both side of the differential together yeah. so the car is constantly one wanting to go on a drift yeah and that's what we in a gt4 and gt3 car absolutely do not want to do uh, maybe maybe in another stream we just do a full locked gt4 bmw and just go nuts but um that's a different story <laughs> well yeah basically well uh, you need a balance between a uh a soft differential and a stiff differential yeah 
it, there must be a balance. Uh, it's like runners on a running track. Hawthorne yeah, brings yeah, it to yeah. the point. The outside yeah, person has to. Yeah, that's, that's the best example you can exactly. get. Exactly. Awesome, Hawthorne. You you got it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's like the amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, it's a good explanation, actually. Yeah, that's why uh, like uh, track and field runners don't start on the same point, on the same line. Oh, yes, exactly. They are positioned differently. differently oh, my. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I've been watching Olympics since I'm little and I never understood that. That's why <laughs> when they are starting, sometimes they are starting in the in the turn, right? And the, the yeah. outside guys start more in front because they yeah, have to cover yeah. more. Holy more crap. Ground, Hawthorne, yeah. you just like clicked something in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So, so yeah, basically that's what it does. So let's just keep it at there and then you can just do a several laps and I try to remember what else I wanted to tell people. Oh yeah. <laughs> Temperatures just dropped a little bit, but the tire pressures look actually cool right now. So I just remember when we did the quick set of on Hungaroring and you basically did 10 changes at once and I was not able to comprehend for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's the worst thing you can do as because, you know, changing too many stuff at once, uh, you basically have no clue what is going to go wrong. You know, you don't know what part is going to uh, make the car go bad or yeah. better. And the fun thing now is today when I watched the, the German team, like they were struggling in their YouTube video explaining what the Lamborghini was doing and you know what they needed to change for the setup. They were talking about stuff that I heard before and that I now understand even better, like exactly differential lock, raising the rear right height, making the springs more stiff and I actually knew why they wanted to do that. And yeah. This makes motorsport, I think, so much more interesting right now for me because I, I finally understand what's going on yeah, in understanding certain it is parts. Making, yeah, understanding stuff is actually a lot, makes things a lot, a lot more fun. Yeah. Uh, fun thing is that, you know, um, let's say the day that um, F1 announced that Mercedes-Benz is using the DS system <laughs> and they said, like, they cannot make like uh, the replicate the system for like maybe like a couple of seasons. I actually replicated the system and I still have the files in like the next day, just <laughs> because I knew how the system worked. I, yeah. I didn't. I did. I couldn't like make uh, like design the molds for everything and like test them and like if they break under pressure or anything. But I gave the. I made the three D model of the idea. Idea and how it works, uh, basically to like the next day. And I've emailed it to Red Bull to see to see what they uh, have to say about it. But I you know, and responses back. Yeah, they probably just stole your design and are replicating it right now. I don't know about that. But, uh, I didn't like. I've made an animation about it and everything, but I didn't show the actual mecha mechanics. Yeah. Anymore. Okay. I was, when I watched the, the German team struggling today on Nürburgring, I was thinking about you and I was saying, look, they should just hire Ian and they, <laughs> you could really help them, I guess, because the thing is, they, uh, they had Nico Hülkenberg as a driver and then he got, you know, uh, he had to drive into Formula One, so they had to replace him. And um, because of that, Lamborghini basically screwed their race engineer support and said like, oh, we can't make it, I'm sorry. So they were struggling at uh, Nürburgring and didn't have any race engineer from Lamborghini helping them with issues of the car. And that was really a shame, I think. I mean, I'm not really interested in motorsport in general because, you know, it's, uh, it's way too much stress and it's way too much work for me. Yeah. Like, I love cars. I live with cars every day. Like, I breathe petrol, let's say. Some people like to say it like that. Yeah. But, you know, working on mechanical stuff is not really my personal favorite thing. Uh, as, like, the Hawthorne is uh, saying, that we're lucky uh, we can change settings without needing a team of people and staff. Exactly. Standing. Yeah, like, we can change, like, we can change the uh, spring rate with a click, but the entire team needs to take off the wheels, take off the tires, take off the spindles. Uh, unlink the uh, suspension, uh, you know, wishbones, uh, take off the coilovers, like open up the uh, 
entire coil over itself. Like, be careful not to lose a bolt or anything, or be careful not to, like, uh, break the dampers and anything, and just, like, take out the spring and just like, replace it with another spring. We just did it with another, with just one click and then yeah. went back on the track like, in 10 seconds. Our struggle is just to know what we need to change. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's a big, it's a good thing that uh, you understand the basics of uh, how to set up a car and then you can move on to like a more professional, uh, you know, courses and take like uh, uh, experience from being in the field. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I told this once or twice, I hope no one takes it out of context, but if you know how anything works, the rest of it, like assembling it or disassembling it, is just a matter of opening and closing some bolts and nuts. Like that's <laughs> like I hope no one takes it out of context because there's a lot into uh, there's a lot of you know, knowledge that you need. There's a lot of experience you need to have to, of course, you know, open a like. For example, let's say an engine or maybe like assemble it back again. Yeah. Uh, but it's like if you know how it works, then you will have a lot more easier of a time to like put it back in together. Like, uh, yeah. for example, like uh, last day I was talking about uh, how to like uh, how drivers need to uh, how mechanics need to like uh, torque spec each bolt on the engine. That's like basically the experience on assembling a, a car engine. But you know, uh, if you don't know how like a piston works, you just look, take, uh, you know, you disassemble the piston and just take a look at the piston and say, "Oh my God, what did I do? Where can yeah, I put exactly. it right now?" So how does the car feel right now? I feel it's like way more forgiving. It's more forgiving, yeah, but at the same time, I have to really hit my markers. I mean, I think you did a good job because your delta is like uh, 1.5. No, oh, and uh, I just improved my time by one tenth. Yeah. We finally have an improvement. Nice. <laughs> so basically, you know. Um, it's a little bit more forgiving than you know the uh, setup before this. So uh, the next step might be like raising the rear end like by like two millimeters, maybe like make it 105, 107. Like okay. 105. We just put it at 107. D did we? Yeah, because I said come oh, on. Okay. Okay. So the next thing will be to read the telemetry data. Okay. Oh, I look at that, four tens. Uh, okay, we did change the uh, cameras as well. Yeah, I think uh, it's also now coming into play that the tires are at optimum temperature right now. Yeah. It's because the... Um, actually, the camber, because of the IMO, Distributing the heat all over the time yeah. as well. So, are you, uh, so are you recording telemetry data or? Yes. Not? Okay. So. Ah, I was on a really good lab and then I messed it up in one corner. But um, let me just do one more. Yeah. Oh, the uh, uh, Hawthorne, another question for you, Ian. Okay, let me read it. Uh, so, you said last time the, the points hit to make the driver work harder as the car is capable. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, basically I said, uh, you know, if you don't have enough experienced driver, it's like putting a uh, GT3 driver behind the wheels of a Formula 1 car. They're probably not going to drive it as quick uh, <laughs> as... They like probably a, won't have a very good day. Yeah, yeah, probably. You know, the difference is like this. Like, you need to set the car up wow. according to the driver. 
you know, you are the race engineer for the driver. Yeah. So, for example, maybe if Amir was behind the wheel, Amir like car like way too aggressive. Like he throws the car left, right, and center. Like does every type of crazy thing to the car to make it fast. Uh, Holy you crap! Yourself, man. I was getting too overconfident right now because yeah, I was yeah. five tenths ahead. Yeah, you were five tenths ahead. You were. And then I was like, see that that that's what happens when you look at the stupid green field in the corner left. But the car feels really good now. I think that that's really it took like three, four laps, but now it really feels good. Look at the tire pressures, they're perfect. Okay, I think we need to do a quiet lap so you can concentrate more. Yeah yeah, no problem. I'm gonna take like a glass of water. I'm a little thirsty right now. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is really amazing, guys. Thank you so much for asking the questions and participating in chat. It just really is uh, an incredible opportunity to learn so much. As well as for me, as that is like really why I do this channel to just get there's so much more to this topic and it's it's such an interesting learning process I mean the feeling for my car now in the last two hours completely changed if we go back to the first outlap it's crazy of course I think there are um, drivers out there who can even drive really you know crazy times with the base aggressive setup but um for me, the thing is always that if a car doesn't feel good and I can't kind of... I don't want to say trust the car, but if, if a car just doesn't feel good, I, I can't push it. And that's why a setup helps me so much more. Even though, as we now see, is a very tricky thing to do. And you have to be so careful in the GT4 here around Laguna Seca. I going through this corner already you can lose so much time or make up so much time as you can see Uncle Ben is saying sometimes setting up a car is more fun than the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's basically like that because you know yeah. You're try it's like trying different different cars. Oh 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 oh! Too early on the throttle. Ah, see when I when I get just too anxious and like, come on, I need to push it. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it feels really good now. Um, I think if I if I just practice a few more hours with that, I can run a really good, um, a pretty decent race pace. Let's say. So, um, so it, it, just to notice, it took now really, I think, three or four laps until I got a feeling for the car mm -hmm. and was able to improve. Uh, wow, um, really exciting. <laughs> Sometimes setting up a car is more fun than the race itself. It's like a game in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Hawthorne uh, said, I have learned so much uh, the last month watching your drive. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, do you want to send me the uh, Ooh, yeah. atomic file? So okay, let me that. take let me take off one glove so that I can use the mouse. Um so let's take the latest one, right? Um so the yeah. telemetry data just for everyone yeah, like to see. Um just an explanation for anyone in the stream. If you want to record telemetry data, you go to electronics in setup and set the amount of laps you want to record. I put it to ten because I'm not even, you know, going ten laps, four or five. And what you then need to do is here in your asset to call a competition folder that you have somewhere in your documents probably you go to Motec, right yeah and then you sort by date because then you see you i have a huge load of stuff i don't even care about so we should probably clean that 20 we megabyte. don't have your uh screen your screen that if you want to show people where the folder is it should be here it's on my screen 
probably takes some oh time. yeah yeah it's it's not on my screen <laughs> it's not on your screen yes yeah, so what my... i'll send to you is the last one now from yeah, send it. Have... yes just you need both files right uh yeah send them both send them both there's a small like zip and... them like make them zip uh, on one zip folder and then yeah i need to zip it anyway because it's too big so basically what the software that we're using is called Tech. it's like m-o-t-e-c and uh when you open it up it's asking you for um if you, uh, if you want to show that live just let me know then i pull in the discord i don't know if i can share my i'm a little bit too scared to <laughs> launch my stream. oh because if you upload yeah, it okay, might yeah, yeah, yeah it might crash the uh so discord. maybe just send me screenshots again Okay, so uh, basically, it's like you need to uh, load a, um, you know, workbench, basically, which is uh, the uh, preset of your tabs and everything. Uh, you have Motic yourself, right? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never used it. I just know from what, what I see from other streamers, and I think my girlfriend was using it already. Um, and, and yeah, but I, I never really used it so far. It's... So basically, Motec is, uh, I'll send a uh, screenshot for you so you can see it. I mean, honestly, for everyone still watching, we, we are going now into something very deep that if you're just doing this for fun, you don't necessarily have to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you definitely don't have to do deep, deep uh, information uh, that is giving you. Like, this is the base format of a telemetry, like, it's the basic. Yes. Workbench that I uh, loaded. It's not your. Uh, it's not your telemetry files actually loaded up right now. It's the basic shape of the Motec itself. And this is the suspension histogram that we see. Uh, here. Um, I've I've still haven't uh, loaded your file there. Yeah, yeah. I just did with the screenshot you sent me. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what this thing is when you load a uh, file on it, it looks like a a lot of things coming at your face right like at one second like it's a little bit scary at the first time yes i completely know what you mean <laughs> yeah time. at the first time it's like a very to look at because there's a lot of colors number bars everywhere yeah. and everything it's like but... i didn't sign up for that i just want to drive a race car <laughs> yeah yeah like uh, this was supposed to be uh, this was supposed to be a lot of fun, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> Uncle Ben so, just says his daughter got crazy when she saw the Hello Kitty livery I did for my girlfriend in the Aston Martin. <laughs> I know, so, right? <laughs> Uncle Ben's now you need to drive a Hello Kitty car. You know that, right? <laughs> so you sent me. So this uh, is yeah, now the. So this is your suspension histogram that I've sent you. Doesn't look that bad. I, it, it actually doesn't look really good as well. So it's okay, not that so bad, it's not good as well. How did they say in, in Chernobyl TV show, it's not, not good, not terrible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, this is like your suspension histogram. It's like uh, yes. the name says the suspension histogram. What this, uh, this says is that, uh, you know, as you can see, like if you look at one of the windows, uh, it says bump on the right side rebound on the left side on the top yeah. of them and this one yeah. the yellow one is the left front the orange yeah. is the right front yeah. and right yeah, rear yeah. left rear it's so. respective to the tire uh, tire yeah. position in your and, car and for every tire we see the rebound on the left side and the bump so meaning bump rebound okay yeah so uh, as you can see if for further explanation uh there is a writing that says damper velocity that's the vel like yeah. on the top left uh well it explains everything then if you look at it it's actually the speed that your dampers are working uh so mm -hmm. that means uh for example let's say for on your front left tire uh for like 15 percent of the no like uh 13 percent of the time your uh damper front left damper is on a very slight uh, rebound okay so what that says is that we need to actually lower your front rebound to make a perfectly symmetrical uh graph yeah, it so has what, to be it yeah. has to be uh 
uh, you know, it has to be perfectly symmetrical to be like the optimal. Uh, yes. Damper so what, setup. what we want is to have each tire the rebound and bump to be perfectly symmetrical. So each yeah, it has, of the because grass. you know, in the in like uh, in the dead center, that means the uh, damper is not is neither going to the bump or the rebound. Mm -hmm. That means the car is perfectly like planted, like it's straight on the track. It's not rolling around. It's uh, you know excessive rake or everything. It's mm -hmm. just perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. So uh, what that says to to like uh, someone like me who is not using the calculations to like uh, decide what to do is that we need to like lower the front left rebound by like one click. If it was like in GT3 cars, I would have uh, lowered the uh, fast rebound by one click. So but the front left rebound m lower by one click. Lower it by one click. Okay, I just did that. Okay. So it's probably going to like uh, mess around with uh, the right rebound as well because you know rebound is a, a you know uh, a more effective uh, value than yeah. like let's say like fast rebound. So because of that, we're not going to uh, change the rebound on the front right. Okay. Because the front left, uh, front left uh, rebound uh, decrease will affect the front front right yeah, as well. Yeah. So and, and just to to explain why we decreased it by one click is because the graph of the rebound on the front left is. A bit higher than yeah, the bump. Yeah, it's a little bit higher. Yeah. There, the to, uh, to first bring it row down. on the left of the um, center line yeah. is in it's the rebound uh, area, and it's a little bit too much high. Yeah, so just so that anyone in. can follow along. Yeah. Uh, so about the uh, question that uh, Hawthorne asked. Uh, so in real, uh, you know, real uh, race engineers, uh, engineers actually use a uh, equation uh, called Gosi uh, equation, which okay. is like you put values of uh, each uh, part of the uh, graph, and you try to make it like an equal from left to right mm -hmm. on each uh, side of the suspension. For GT4 cars, I don't know how I work, but for GT3 cars we actually had to input four different uh, uh, variables, which, were, which then actually gave us four different values as well. Mm -hmm. And those four different values are ba uh, bump, fast bump, rebound, and fast rebound. So it's like the calculations give us numbers. We give, they give us numbers back. We, get, we actually uh, can extract numbers from these graphs. That's why they use telemetry. Okay. That's the, the, they use it to extract uh, actually numbers. Yeah. So oh, and uh, by thing... the way, by the way, Hawthorne, I saw your question regarding cinema uh, HD. So I'll uh, whenever either when we finish or find time in between, I'll do the replay and show you um, the values and what I do. Okay. Uh, so another thing on the front suspension system that I'm seeing is if you look at the right side of the. Uh, graph the bump side on the front left front right actually front right bump side yeah. yes the front right is a little bit you know swollen up we need to like to yes. lower it down like like cool it down a it's little a bit, bit more bulky yeah it's a little bit bulky <laughs> uh, so because we don't fast uh re fast bump or fast rebound we need to like connect these two sides together if it okay. was a gt3 car we could you we could change like each side of the car independently yeah. so because the right side of the front right suspension is uh, a little bit more bulky uh, rather than the front left we yes. need to lower the front right bump by two clicks the front like right is, bump. Yeah, this is okay. just like try on error. I'm not. I'm not actually. I'm not. Um, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm not doing equations or anything. I'm just no. doing it by trial and error. I'm just Let's looking just, at it. 
it's basically what anyone can do because Motec is free to use, right? And if you do that, that's like we are basically showing you now how you can approach it. And then, you know, we change that and we go another five, six, seven, eight laps and load it in again and see what the changes did actually. Yeah, if it, if it, just, if it just was too much reduction, then we go back up yeah. one click. That's actually how I do my setups. It's not yeah. the most professional way of doing it. It's not the most like sophisticated one, but it, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we want to gain experience and that's the way to get experience. Mm -hmm. So that's for the front suspension. Now moving uh, to the rear suspension. So visually it uh, seems the like the right approach. Yes, Hawthorne. I think so as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like the visually, the uh, today anything yeah so uh, on the rear as you as you can see uh it's actually symmetrical the graphs themselves are pretty much symmetrical they are just a bit to the right yeah right? The, yeah the peak is more towards the bump side of the uh, yeah. stuff so what we're going to do is reducing each side of the uh each bump by one click on the rear rear end like it, it's like sure. 11 right now make it like 10 okay on each side uh was it 10 on the left as well no it's or, 11 on both sides and i put okay. it to 10. so the reason i have reduced it by one click on each side rather than uh like choosing the one with you know more bulk is because they're pretty much in the same ballpark you know the pretty much the same mm -hmm. so i thought you know maybe like make them um you know reduce them equally so they move uh, accordingly to the other part okay so let's go to other tabs on the uh let's say um motec motec so uh go on the bump stop tab yeah you need to send me the screenshot uh okay so let's let me send you the screenshot and oh so you don't you don't i forgot you don't have uh sorry yeah i need to in, i probably need to get it now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's actually a, a fun thing to play with you know you feel uh way more knowledgeable <laughs> <laughs> it's a game you're, in the game. It, yeah <laughs> hey dude what are you playing i'm playing motec what are you playing <laughs> <laughs> So basically, bump stuffs is where your suspension or the, like let's say dampers are like bottoming out, like it's like dead, like it's so um, so much uh, compressed that is hitting okay. like the solid uh, end of the dampers themselves, which so, probably is in the Quark screw, right? Exactly. Like if you look at the uh, bottom ones, it's yes. again respectable to. Uh, your position of the, your tires top left is your front left uh, top ah, right is your front right okay uh so both left. rear tires are or suspension is bottoming out exactly interesting exactly. The, the the rear right is bottoming out more than the left rear it's like yeah, one yeah. two yeah. three four five wow he's bottoming out a lot okay so what does so that let's, tell let's us say, let's, let's say like the uh, the entrance of the corkscrew your bottom right your uh you know rear right is bottoming out yes like imagine being on the corkscrew the corkscrew you're turning left right yes it's because there is the bump and then you turn left and the rear yeah, right gets all the pressure the bump that and you're turning left and you're accelerating and you're going into a down so your right rear suspension is getting compressed and yes. when it's like it's it's like the bump stop right let's say it's like the bump stop right it's your it's like you're riding on the edge of your uh, dampers it's, it's like riding on your edge of your uh, suspension system yes uh on the uh actual game that you're uh, showing it's the red line that you see on the on there, graph yeah. that okay. means the yellow line is reached to the red line at yes. the top crazy okay so what that means is that your uh actually suspension is ending up hitting up there uh <laughs> and it by hitting there that means you're um unsettling the car yeah because unsettling it basically the car. gives a push and to the car 
uh, you said you said you, you said we can change the bump stop rates right uh we can yes the rate can be changed okay so here's the bump stop rates come come into play awesome. when you're bottoming out your suspension that means you're hitting your dampers to the end of your uh suspension system mm -hmm. at the end of that there is a squishy part there's a squishy like cylinder or like let's say a bump stop. Yeah. it's called bump stop it's yes. like stopping it's like a break <laughs> it's like a squishy thing if you increase the rate of it it's the exact same thing as your spring rates or let's say wheel rates in this case yes if you increase your bump stop rate that means the uh, suspension uh, when it's uh, going to bottom out it's going to hit a harder stop it's okay. like for, for for uh, let's say right now it's 300 newt uh, 300 newtons uh if you increase it to like 500 maybe like maybe or more it's hitting like a stiffer like it's, it's like 500 it's hitting a 500 newton uh worth of stop it's mm -hmm. uh, like hitting a stiffer uh you know stop itself okay it needs more so, force to bottom yeah, out it needs, uh no 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 it's what? not it's not uh, there's no need to there's no need for more force it's just hitting harder oh, okay you know? it's his it's like hitting a harder wall it's you running into a wall or <laughs> running into a like uh cushion wall oh okay i get it the difference is you the speed that you're running is the same but the wall is different right now <laughs> you know the okay. lower the lo the lower bump stop rate is the cushion wall the highest bump stop rate is like the concrete wall okay great so i want so, to run against the concrete wall uh no you need to run against the cushion wall because you're <laughs> bottoming out you don't want the car to jump around okay if you if you like uh you know run into a concrete wall you're going to bam bounce back a lot harder but if you like uh, you know run into a cushion wall the cushion wall will absorb your force and you will be uh, you know you won't like bounce back as much oh okay so in the corkscrew as uh, you might remember, I lowered your front wheel rates to absorb the impact on your front, uh, exactly, front yeah. of the car. So we need to do the same for the rear. So on the corkscrew, it's bottoming out, bottoming out. So we need the softest bump stop rate possible. And that is have. like the softest uh, that we can go with the yeah. GT4 car. Yeah. For example, if it's if it was like a a higher bump stop rate, you will definitely lose the end of your yes, car. Yes. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, we can't really change anything here right now. We are. Uh, at... Yeah, it's like it's like the end of the road for setting up this car, uh, setting up this portion of the car. Yeah. Okay. So that's like that's what the bump stop does. If you look at your uh, map on your the screenshot that I've sent you. Uh, yes. It has like the uh, markers, the uh, blue parts. The blue yeah. parts are actually where you hit where your bump stops. Yes, okay. And we can't improve that with the bump stop. Yeah, rate. we can't improve that. Yeah. Okay. So is there so, another way? What? Is there another way, or do no, I just? No, you don't need. You need. You don't need to change it. I'm just talking about what Motex is giving you. Okay. And another thing is. You and I'm sending the uh, actual image for you. The cool thing about Motec is uh, you can actually use Mo on real cars, on real life as well. If you can okay. extract telemetry, you can just... <laughs> um, oh boy. You know, send it, looks it. Like okay, an so, or it looks like an earthquake screenshot. Yeah, I'll explain <laughs> it. It's not that uh, big much of a deal. Hawthorne asks, uh, what does the bump stop range do? Bump stop range is actually where you position the bump stop itself. If you place it lower, you're ah. actually... Uh, if you place it lower, the red line on the screen actually lowers itself uh, down. Yes. So you s hit your bump stop, uh, bump stop way sooner in the... Like, and we... Uh, we can't do that for the GT4. Yeah. Oh, and Ge Georgios uh, just suggested we increase the wheel rate to not bottom it out. So uh, the difference is uh, to not uh, make it bottom out makes the car actually bumpy on other corners. Hmm. So the, the problem is we need uh, the car 
to not jump around as much because at the first of the um, uh, stream, we talked about the circuit itself. The circuit in the uh, third uh, sectors are real bumpy. So we don't need the car to be stiff on the back. Yes. It, the car is actually pretty stiff because uh, we needed a rotation. But we set it up the car in a way to actually uh, absorb the um, uh, bumps on the track. Which is what so we what experienced we did, yeah. Uh, before. Yeah, that's that's why we changed it like this now. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the thing with the uh, GT4 we actually, car. We actually reduced the uh, wheel rate. And instead of the wheel rate, we actually increased the bump on the dampers. Yes. We let the dampers do the job more. Yes. So let's see how that works out because I have yet to do some laps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So back to the screenshot that I've sent you. Uh, Which is the, the rake. Screen, yeah. Like it's, it's called the rake. It's the rake is the, as I said, the difference <clears throat> between right height, uh, between your front and yes. the rear. There is a horizontal line uh, and the value of it is zero. I don't know can see it or not yes we can see it okay it's there that is where your car sits like uh not moving like the rake is perfectly like fine and there okay so like your car is not moving your rake is like standing in the in that position okay mm -hmm. so what this uh, is actually telling us uh, if you look at the right part of your screen there's a green bar and yes. the left of it is like another empty bar it's like throttle and brake uh, respect uh, respective to the position of you on the track yeah uh the that means uh, it shows uh where what is your throttle or uh, position on yeah. the track so the, as well the position so, you selected shows 100 percent throttle yeah you're like flat out right now yes and what this shows us is actually how difference we're getting from like raking into like uh, full on throttle and what we need to achieve is to like uh, lower this graph and make it like more closer to a straight line we okay, need so right now it's going crazy uh, it's because of the gt4 cars are usually you know a little bit uh, less uh, you know hardcore on their suspension system maybe mm -hmm. that's because of that uh the value did you read is 10 newton meters where uh gorgeous i've uh okay yeah i don't probably mechanical grip um i don't know but let's not get confused maybe we can we can answer that after yeah that. yeah we finish and so I go like out for some race, laps like, <laughs> Uh, the other uh, values, I'm not going to send it because uh, send all the screenshots because there is a lot of things. Yeah, or it's just... Should I send it or not? Just no, no, no. Let's that. just keep it a bit shorter for, for now. Okay. I think the, even the so whole other... tech topic is something on its own. So is there like anything you would say now we should adapt? Uh, the thing is, I, I just needed to look at the suspension histogram and the bump stops and we did like yeah that's like it that's and that's what we it. what we changed yeah 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 so based so the on other things the other things that uh based on gave uh some inputs to uh his car to change his car like a little bit so yeah. his car is now like uh, adapted to what i feel like you need to change on the motic as i said uh, before you need to do calculations if you want exact like pinpoints uh, like numbers. Yeah, I just said I just did some visual uh, guesstimations. Yeah, okay, that's what we what we had to do because we're not gonna calculate like crazy now. <laughs> yeah. So the bumps of value, the bumps of value is not on ten newton meters because there's no 10 newton meters 10 newton meters is like like your you know headphones cushion type of uh stiffness oh is yeah. it like 10 millimeters newton okay like per 10 millimeters no i'm not sure i'm not sure as well so right now for me is uh head out on track yeah, and... yeah, just head out on the track and do some track uh do some laps yippee uh, the other uh, tactic is 
actually the general tab shows you the speed that you're going the brake that you have and the oversteer and understeer you have on the track as well yeah uh plus you can choose uh, the lap that you did i was i i chose your uh, my best lap, lap yeah yeah of course. which was the 131.7 yay so it shows that you have more understeer than oversteer rather than oversteer oh, okay crazy i don't really see that understeer have you ever felt that much understeer just when i'm a tad too quick okay but um a pretty substantial amount of understeer on the car. really yeah okay i'm gonna just check again Uh, so, uh, Gorgias, uh, the uh, bomb stub value, uh, we have two different, uh, you know, uh, uh, variables for the bomb stubs. There is the bomb stub rate and there is the bomb stub range. The bomb stub range is actually a distance which the uh, suspension needs to travel to hit the bomb stub. Okay, so and the bump stop rate is the stiffness of the bump stop itself. It's like running into a wall. If you have a low bump stop rate, you're going to hit the wall sooner with the same speed. If you're uh, running up uh, into a uh, you know a concrete or more stiff wall, that means you're having a higher bump stop rate. I hope it doesn't sound as confusing. I'm uh, just making like uh, visual, uh, trying to explain it visually for you guys to understand it. But I hope it's not really that all that confusing. So how does the car feel? I just did my outlap. Don't stress myself. <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay. I just love the sound of the AMG. Yeah, that uh, cross the VA sounds amazing. Sounds even better than the Yes Martin, I think. Uh, it's a little bit more grumbly than Aston Martin, but I yeah. like the Martin a little bit more. <laughs> The car that sounds really insane is the Maserati. Oh yeah, it's like the the best Ferrari V8. Yeah, yeah, it's like the best of the best. Uh, the bump stop rate is shown in n slash ten millimeters. Uh, we didn't see that one. It's not in the game, but perhaps that's how it's calculated. Newton but per 10 millimeters. Holy crap, I was late on brakes there. Car feels very well balanced now. Tires are coming on temperature. Five tenths so far. Uh, don't get too uh, over cocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I, I wish I could just disable that time. <laughs> we don't need another broken <laughs> bumper. Score. Yeah. The crazy thing is that we didn't even change the aerodynamic sound of the car. Like we didn't change the uh, rear Look wing at that. Just lost a tenth. 
New lab record, guys. I'm just now smiling across my face. <laughs> two hours of hard work and I improved by, I think, two seconds. That's awesome. Car feels really good right now. Now, just not me doing any more mistakes. But this was massive now. We just did some small tweaking to the bump, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, the front and bump on the rear. But the car already felt great before that, to be honest. And I think if it wouldn't have been me making mistakes, I could have pulled off the lap time a bit earlier. But like now, like now I'm doing just stupid mistakes again. Uh, Hawthorne, that's because uh, the car it you know, a better time turning or did before. Say again, you were just a bit cut off. Uh, Hawthorne said you have less steering input as well, you have to move lead. Uh, I was explaining why that uh, happened. It's because uh, the car is having less oversteer and the car is more planted, it's not loose like before. I even have the feeling that I can brake way harder into turn one. Does that make sense? Um, that's just how the car feels, how, that, how the car makes you feel. And yeah, if you feel like that, then you can do it. <laughs> it's all about the feeling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's basically how I work. I work mostly on the feeling side of the things. Yeah. I uh, usually... Do. I uh, believe that if you you have a good connection to the car, then you will be a fast player. Yes. But, you know, uh, other uh, engineers and mechanics think that, you know, you, uh, you have to every calculation to make the car faster. I don't really believe in that. No, I think the feeling is most important because if you don't have the feeling and don't trust the car, you can't go fast. Ah, oh, stupid mistake! We have some light damage in the rear of the car. That's one thing I need to get under control for races that, um, I just should not push every lap. I need to settle for something, but right now I'm just pushing it. But again, five tenths. We jumped from 131.7 to 131.2. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, do you want to send me the file so we can see how the yes. uh, changes affected was just a the... few laps, but still. Well, two laps is two laps itself, you know? Ah, uh, Miltek. So I'm just gonna... Wow, the, holy crap, the telemetry data is, whew. why is it now such a big file? I've it's made this a little bit too excited. <laughs> it's, it's twice the size than before. Uh, maybe it's because it's reading your last 10 laps. Oh shit, yeah. I can't send that to you, I guess, because it's 17. Uh, could you like to zip it or? Yeah, I can zip it and now it's 17. Uh, just wait a second. I'll just quickly throw it onto my drive and send the link to you. Okay. So in the meantime, pop up the questions in Discord, guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm just quickly uploading it and sending you the link. All right. Should be done in a second. But yeah, just, just to give my impression now, the, the car feels more... Um, how do you say that? You you can more expect what it does in every corner. So the car is predictable. Predictable, right? That's the word. Cheese. So I'm sending you the link. Okay.
Ta-da! Let's analyze the Motec. Yeah, so the, the, the car is more predictable and more precise because if you remember, like like uh, Hawthorne said, I can trust the car more. It's like in the like in the first hour when we started working, I was really struggling a lot on the steering wheel and that's what you can also see with a lot of gt3 and gt4 drivers that sometimes you just you you struggle a lot i even posted a comparison video on my discord from lamborghini in assetto corsa and the real car the real gt3 car and the, the difference is just like um the, when you see how much the driver has to work because the, the the lambo was just i don't know either it was the setup or it was the track or whatever but he was constantly counter steering and trying to get a grip of the car you know <laughs> but anyway it just showcased how amazing acc and how realistic they are doing it in terms of sound and handling and they were basically doing the identical gearing and turn-ins and braking and accelerating like uh, the real guy. It was brilliant. Um, you sent me four files. Uh, which one is it? Is, is it like the four? last ones? Yeah, no, one is like 31 megabytes. And... Yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You need to sort it by date that you have the ones with the yeah, latest Yeah, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. I realized it That's the three. right away. <laughs> By the way, I think I got new subscriber without any message. Disponed and Kingpin 580. If you're watching, sorry, I didn't get the notification. Welcome to the community, man. Okay, so let me load up the file. Come and... on. Come on, do it. Load uh, the file. Okay, so 131.2. <laughs> yes. Jesus, I'm setting so, my bar really high for Thursday. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, the uh, histogram, the suspension has, didn't really change. But uh, I feel it's like the, it's a little bit more, uh, the bulk is a little bit more taken away. Mm, uh, I still have the old one so we can compare it. Uh, I have them as well. I. In a second, let's let me just send you the so this was new the ones. One. This is the new one, and the old one is. I I, st I still got them here, no problem. No, I can overlay them together. To... Oh, but interesting. Yeah. I'm just switching around for the stream to see the differences. So this is the old one, one thirty one seven. This is the new one, one thirty one two. This is the uh, comparison that I've sent. This is the overlay. Ooh, so basically nice. the blue one and... Oh boy, that's a bit... You know, it's shifted a little bit to uh, the right as we wanted it to do on front. And did the same on the rear as well. So that means if we do another clip of what we did before, it should make the thing go a lot better I just i just made it a big bigger for the stream so that we can see that so deep yeah so the colored the color ones, the blue one the blue one well the yellow orange and blue stuff is the old one right or is it a new one yeah, no, yeah. the, old uh, the one. yellow orange blue and the dark blue one is the um old one old one yes and the uh, actually the lighter the one with uh, you know lighter colors are the new ones. Yes, the so gray the front ones. And shifted the front shifted to the right as we wanted it to do by uh, increase the uh, actually um, decrease the rebound by yes. one click and increase the bump on the front right by another click. But the front right is still bulky and the uh, rear the bulk tires is a little bit yeah the bulk is a little bit um reduced but in the rear end we still have the same problem yes it's still too much on the bump side right so uh what we need to do is to do the exact or uh, for the front ends and Yeah, go to the uh, damper. Yeah. Uh, reduce the rebound of the front left by one click. Yes. 
and the front right reduce the um actually i'm not because we did talk about this before with Amir and the other guy that we did the um, setups before together. Mm -hmm. uh, he said Mercedes Benz does things in reverse. I'm not sure if that's true or not. So uh, should we try that? <laughs> Alex Raskin just posted that you are delivery master. <laughs> yes, he is indeed. Thanks, mate. I even saw the livery mate, Ian did a brilliant job. If anyone needs a custom livery, Ian is the guy. He's not only doing cool setups, he's the livery texture master. Yeah, thank you. I got a lot of inspiration from you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so should we try the, um, you know, experimental thing that we realized with uh, the GT3 car? Because sure. they said uh, the um, uh, Mercedes AMG, uh, dampers does the reverse thing when you want it like you, if you sure. like in, in uh, if you increase the bump it will reduce the bulkiness of the bump itself Let's which just actually it shows it right right here because we reduced the bump on the front right but the bulk bulkiness has been increased uh, a little bit so yes i think we it. should do the reverse thing so increase the bump by like um two clicks where on the front right two clicks okay two clicks. and on the rear increase the um, bump of each side by uh two clicks okay so we're uh one click uh, above what we had before yes cool and so go out for laps yeah so let me see your um Oversteer again. Uh, let's see this one. Oh, okay. You had uh, something else. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see how does the. So let's. <laughs> this is interesting. Let's see if it works. The experiment with the Mercedes. The, yeah, because I, I, I can't find any reasonable, uh, you know, explanations for it. But, you know, it seems to work. Like, <laughs> it did work on Amir's car. I don't know why, but it did work. That's a mystery of German engineering. <laughs> yeah, basically. Vorsprung durch Technik. So yeah, you lost a little bit of your understeer as well. So Interesting. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. The line is actually a little bit, um, you know, sh shrunken down. Cool. So I'm gonna just head out again. Yeah, probably do that. So you know, at this point, it's just like um, trial and error. Do the do fine tunings and everything this is like this is what fine tuning is yeah you so know, we are now really basically at the end of tonight's workshop and i think let's let's see what happens after these four or five laps and then um uh le yeah let's just see i'm just gonna head out again i put uh, i decrease the telemetry now to six laps yeah and so let's it see makes what a new will file. happen woohoo i just want to put in a little disclaimer i'm slowly getting tired <laughs> but it has been a thrilling adventure so far honestly two days ago i would have never imagined of dipping down into the low 31s so this is already absolutely crazy progress for me I hope I was helping you. Of course, you know, I was, dude. I was, uh, I was a little bit uh, <laughs> worried. I told you before, but because I've never um, for a car. Yeah. But so I now, like it helped out. Basically, the physics are the same, right? I mean. Yeah, the physics are the same. Even with even the Formula One cars, they are basically the same. But one is more sensitive to changes than the other. Yeah. No. It just may be more one complex. Is the pinnacle of engineering because every single piece on that part is so, uh, you know, engineeringly crafted and yeah. so like, finely crafted. The um, actually the uh, Formula One cars does not have, you know, traditional springs. They have yeah. heat springs. It's like basically a strut, like going all across the Crazy. car. Yeah. It will, it, I think stuff like that will never work on GT4 cars or stuff like 
normal cars. Oh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't at Because all. they're just not at the limited, yeah. Yeah, and Formula 1 cars are super fragile, like, they, they can break, like, by a pinch of, you know, yeah. expensive... That's what I think a bit annoying, that's why I love watching GT3 so much more. <laughs> Yeah, if you see like the slightest bumps on Formula One cars, just makes the uh, the cars body parts and like the uh, suspension wishbones and everything just shatter and go all over the place. Yeah. And even if you lose just one small winglet, it will completely offset yeah, your balance. Yeah. So that's just crazy. Yeah, I think the oversteering is magically decreasing. That's interesting. <laughs> I think the reverse <laughs> changing has, is doing its job. <laughs> we are reverse engineering the Mercedes. We're I mean, tricking. I don't know. I I cannot find a you know logically you know a logication of why it does this, but. You know, it's like the suspension is mounted upside down. <laughs> Which it doesn't, because I've seen the AMG's uh, suspension system, but, you know, it just does what it does. I don't know why, but it seems to be working. Sometimes you don't need to know why, sometimes you just need to know and do it. <laughs> I mean, it bugs me a lot, but yeah, I think I need to do that. <laughs> But it's a really interesting lesson for the people now here. So the cheat sheet that we, we were talking about earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> probably add this to that cheat sheet. The Mercedes yeah. is still not on there, so I was thinking to add it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, now I was like, doing a mistake. Do the exact opposite thing that you logically can do with the AMG. And At least with the dampers. <laughs> yeah. Now the feeling in this corner especially improved a lot. I was massively uh, understeering through this one. Before or right now? Before. Uh, now it's be much better. Corkscrew also feels good. Ah, this corner is... I'm still off. If I'm off the line, there's no chance of catching it. But I'm now really um, struggling with my concentration a bit. Yeah, that's your time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm streaming for... Basically driving for three... Well, not really driving for three hours, but... Peak concentration for three hours now. I should have wear a sports tracker or something because I'm sure I burn a huge load of calories already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, push it, you're gaining time. Yeah, it just needs two laps. Two, three laps to get on temperature. Just focus on the track, focus on driving and don't touch game time. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, too late. The blind left is so tricky. Ah! Too early. You were one tenth ahead. Yeah, but I think nothing's broken, so I'm just gonna try it again. Yeah, so basically after this, like, if we were to uh, continue like setting up the car, it would have been just like you know changing the bits and pieces of the car depending on each corner. For example, like if. Uh, he says I need to, you know, have more rotation 
on, for example, this corner on the egg bits because I'm having a little bit too much understeer. Uh, we yeah. have to like change the dampers, uh, which is under pressure on that specific corner. God, no. It's hit and miss now. Now, the uh, honestly, in the car feels brilliant right now. It's all me. It's all me now, struggling to find the consistency. Uh, I remember, like, when we were uh, practicing with Amir for races, uh, Amir was actually... Um, driving for maybe like six or seven hours straight with uh, like keep in mind that he does not proper gear for like sitting and yeah. racing he's like sitting on his couch on a like broken gg27 steering wheel and like looking at a very small monitor i have no idea how he does it the, the, uh, it's just a dedication, you know. He loves what he does, and that's why he's like becoming one of the best at what he is doing right now. I think honestly, he might struggle a lot adjusting to the fun attack because the feeling is absolutely the opposite. But uh, as soon he as actually he actually got a sim cube uh, V2 Pro. Okay. So I don't know how is it's going to affect his driving because <laughs> you know the feeling yeah. is a lot different. The broken G27. Oh, I thought they were gonna order him a fanatic. Uh, they were, but uh, they actually uh, rate uh, a little bit more before uh, Mills actually transferring the money to oh, cool. uh, Mills' friend. So awesome. they could afford for a Simcube uh, V2 Pro and a Fanatec Club Sport uh, pedal. Awesome. So it's like a massive improvement. Because he was uh, looking for a direct drive uh, steering system. Yeah, and Fanatec just gave them 10% off, which is a bit embarrassing. But yeah, I think he will really have a hard time to adjust, but once he adjusts, he will basically go nuts. I don't think it's going to take a long time for him, because uh, as much as I know him, he loves so much that if he gets his hands on this uh, like system, uh, when he gets uh, his hands on that, he's going to practice it like 24-7, like maybe like... In two days, he will be mastering using that direct drive and pedals. Like he, he loves driving so much that yeah. he's like so dedicated in training and you know adjusting his braking points and everything. Crazy. Uh, I've seen him like spending like maybe at least like a half an hour or two, 45 minutes on each corner to just find the perfect like uh you know breaking points on his uh you know replays uh, i'm really just struggling right now to do a clean lap holy crap i guess tomorrow if you like have a good sleep like uh this night uh, you will have a way better time tomorrow <laughs> We can do a little follow-up, yeah. Probably like maybe like 29.9 somewhere around that. Too ambitious, but um, I don't know. What do you feel like? Do you feel like you can do like 129.9? No. I'm doing too many mistakes, so my struggle is really to find the consistent race pace. And uh, the consistent line where I can be fast. I think if I really am lucky, and it's really just luck right now, but I'm just getting slower from lap to lap now because I think my focus is really gone. 
Which is also maybe interesting for the viewers to see that a man is not a machine. <laughs> <laughs> like a good thing about uh, Gran Turismo for the to try setting up cars is that Gran Turismo has AI driving system that you can actually set the okay. car up and give uh, AI the car to go and do like consistent laps uh, one after another. So it's like you can just. Yeah. Sit down and just engineer the car and just do everything from there. I think that's as far as I can go now. I just am not able to do any clean lap anymore. It's horrible. So I, d I don't want to waste anyone's time with that. <laughs> okay, that's... Uh, you... So basically from now on, uh, if anyone wonders what happens in this, is that uh, he does his best. He makes like he could do like a um, probably 0.1 seconds faster of a lap. Like if he did that, then we could start to uh, really it... dig deep into like the um, uh, you know telemetry data, and then after that, if it, if the telemetry data is all clean and ready, we can move on to uh, have the uh, you know. Uh, corner by corner setup, yeah, yeah. like the fine tuning for each corner. You know what I would probably do tomorrow is do some laps, and if I get a good one, I'll just send you the motex so that you can see if the if the changes that we just did in reverse <laughs> All right. um, were really were, were good. Okay, so uh, Hawthorne had a question about like the cinema. Art. Yes, Hawthorne, are you still there? I hope he's still there. Uh, it's actually... The delay is there, so... We need to see if he's yeah, actually yeah, still yeah. Because it's getting really late and viewers are dropping now. People have to work tomorrow, okay. I'm, on, I'm on holidays. Yes, yeah. Hawthorne, cool, so what uh, i do in replace so let's just um let's just pause it on the street somewhere maybe so i'm going into replay i hit my free cam that's always important f7 for the free cam and then middle mouse button opens the cinema hd with the depth of the field and um one tricky thing is that not everything does something here or correlates differently. So that is why I came up with like a screenshot of what the stuff is that I usually use like this. So I have like a cheat sheet like that. So uh, that, that's the values that I play around and it, it only changes. Most of the values just correlate with each other. So you can change something and it doesn't change anything on your screen. Uh, because uh, another value is missing. So I'm going to just use this one as my cheat sheet and show you. So let's say, for example, we change the focus area, like I said. No change at all on my screen. We change the far size. Um, and then you should see some. Yes, Ian, you are actually. Ian, I, I don't know why you want to stay online or. I want to because. Uh... The uh, thing that you're talking about is actually, uh, uh, you know, connected to photography. And <laughs> another thing that I do in my free. So yeah. if you want, I can sure. give you a little bit of uh, info of what these the, things do. Yeah, I, I basically found out by playing around with it. So it's it's actually yeah. easy. It's just interesting that Hawthorne says nothing works. So. Hawthorne, what actually should do something is the far size, because if I increase it to five, uh, you see the background gets even more blurrier. So like this. He wants oh, you to wait, 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 yeah, 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 wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you're right. Let's get rid of this. And let's get, I'm just switching off my webcam for now. So I'm working from the bottom up. Uh, so the first change is when I just change the focus area, nothing happens. And the far size actually just, you know, the higher I put the, the far size, the more blurry the background gets. 
So I'm gonna just put it at two. And scale and near size, I'm not really messing with that because that's usually maybe interesting for really near macro shots. But if we go to the far transition, we can see background adapting a little bit. Near transition, let's just leave like that. And what I then do is change the focal distance. And then we see we can now move the blurriness uh, way more behind. So that's that's actually just what, what I'm playing around with. And what you can then do is just, if you move these sliders, you see how the, the, the blurriness of the background is changing, for example. If you move the far size, you see that you can even make it like, I don't know, even more blurry, which looks really horrible, by the way, actually. <laughs> um, you can change the focal distance to like move the blurriness way more behind or let it be very very close you see um so that's what you can play around with and yeah i, I really haven't found i think the optimal settings because on some depending on the picture or you what you want to do you you know how, how to get a bit of a smoother blurry transition i don't know ian maybe you have a suggestion so, for that. uh you know the focus area you need to like look at it as a uh if you look at a, the car from top it's like a circle so yeah uh, the focus area is like for example uh focus on your like emblem like the mercedes benz yeah. emblem right now the focus area if you like uh increase your focus area it will focus on your emblem and behind it and in front of it you know the area of focus it's like the um you know the yeah, area like this focus on it yeah if i put it on yeah. zero it's basically gone it, it's basically like focusing on that single point that you've uh, tried like put your focus on yes uh so and there is the far size the far size is actually your um like imagine another circle uh, which is the um, actually border between your focus and uh, the area that is in focus and the area which is in not in focus. Okay. So if you increase your far, far size, that means you can see further back. It's not in like it's not in focus, but you can see further back. It's not it's not that blurry. It's like your yeah. blurriness is like reduced. So near size is uh, focus of area again, like uh, the other uh, circle that you need to uh, think about it. If you yeah, increase like the near this. size, yeah. If you increase the near size, it looks actually, like you're drunk. <laughs> yeah. So if you increase the near size, it's actually pushing back the uh, foc uh, focus uh, point of you. Like that, that's what point. you actually could do if you have like a car in front of me and the yeah, car behind yeah, me. And a car I want behind to... of you and a yeah. car behind of you, but you need to like focus on your specific car and like yeah. har uh, hide on the uh, front and back. I, I don't know uh, what the values are in. Are the values in centimeters? Yeah, yeah, I no. don't know the uh, value. I, I also well, don't but know. As I, Yes, it's like, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, a proportionate value. It's not like really like millimeter or centimeter values. The fun thing is like scale that doesn't do anything. So scale is basically uh, the scale of your, um, you know, details that you need. If you like move really close to stuff oh, or okay. let, let's, let's say like you move really back. There is a lens, uh, which I uh, forgot its name, that if you take a picture from something from far away, it looks like miniature uh, toy, toy oh, stuff. Oh, yes, toy I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like basically like that. It's scaling up or scaling down the details on each part. So uh, if you like, it's for like, uh, like bird eye view shots, like you're way far out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you like... Uh, focus on very far out and you just uh, focus on something on down and you want to have a lot of details on your shot, then it will work. Yeah. So there is uh, something called far transition and near. And the difference is uh, like imagine, sh imagine shadows. You have something, I don't know if, it, if it's the right term, uh, but uh, do you know half shadows? Like the uh, brighter, more blurrier part of a shadow when you're... Yes. 
had on on something that's basically uh that but on your uh you know focus uh focus uh, like part of the things so uh you know the blurriness of your background has like two levels one level is like uh normal blurriness and the other part is like the too much blurriness mm -hmm. uh, thing, uh, the thing so if you like uh change the far transition and near transition that's uh, basically moving the uh between the uh, too much blurriness yeah. and the uh, normal blurriness that you have. Yes. And the F stop, which is the focal stop, focal range stop, um, is it's actually the uh, distance between your two of your lenses, which you, um, if you change it, like it's like focusing more on front, and Whoa. if you like focus more on the back, it's going to focus more on the back. It's like a, uh, it's like a, uh, you know, a manual. Uh, focusing uh, it has type huge of. values but it doesn't do anything it's basically because you're so close to the uh oh, okay. AR, and the focal distance is actually high as well i think i found some new interesting setups that i'm going to ch uh, s just save. So, yeah so the depth of field is uh actually lenses is like you stand away stay away from your um you know subject and zooming in it's yeah. it's actually like the perspective of your picture. I don't know if you uh, have that depth of field uh, thing. You can you zoom in or zoom out? I have this one field of view here. Okay, too. field of view. Yeah, field of view is uh, when you like. It's like actually you're standing closer to your subject and you're using a wider lens. Yes. So the field of view is actually the. Uh, uh, you know, uh, angle of your uh, actually lens, the angle that it's uh, wide and yeah. uh, wide, the width of your lens. Having yeah. a spot right now. And the the, <laughs> the cool uh, thing is now with that, when when you just set that up and then you just turn on the replay with yeah, the motion it's blur. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it stays like that. And one other cool thing is that you can do if you really want to get into photographing and like, I mean, really look at this game. It's just insane. Yeah, like, uh, there's a lot of teasers and um, videos um, made can, at this game, yeah. You can basically make your own movie with that. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, it's actually true. Um, and like the other settings that you had beside that depth of field, I can talk about that as well. So the thing here right now is what's also interesting to know for you guys is that if you cannot crank up your graphic settings so high, but you still want to have cool screenshots or replays, um, what I didn't know and just learned is you can have custom graphic presets. If you go in your video settings, you can do like options for your game and set your resolution and settings and then just save it for streaming or gaming like I did. And for replays and cinematics, what you can then do is, for example, crank up the um, not only the resolution, but the resolution scale, which makes the resolution even higher than what you can set for your screen. For example, you can pull it up to like 130, 140, 150 percent, you know, depending on what graphics card you're using. I can do 150% in replay mode. It then gets maybe a bit too much for the GPU. Um, and you can then set everything on Epic. So you, you can really play around. And if you, for example, want to have the game look more saturated, more vibrant, just usually the saturation is on 100, just crank it up to 110 and the game would look even cooler. And what you can then do is just, you know, save the preset for replay cinematic. And every time before you hop into a cinematic and do screenshots, uh, you just set it as you want it, save it, and then just load the preset before you do so. Um, and uh, it's also important to know that the motion blur can be set on only external cameras so that you just see it with the free outside cam in replays. And that's basically it. So get yourself a preset for driving and gaming and get yourself a preset for doing screenshots that, you know, that takes basically your GPU near the limit so that you can still have some smooth images i mean you necessarily don't need 60 frames in in screenshot mode it's enough to have like 25 to 30 you just want to, the image to look as cool as possible so just do that and every time that that's basically the secret to why my screenshots look so good <laughs> yeah okay 
I saved the replay because the lab, I definitely need to document the lab. But I guess, I guess we're done for today. All right then. I will so, explain uh, what impact you have had on a university course. We bought two Simrix with similar pretty one. Now we restart class. Awesome. That sounds like fun. I want to do that. I want to go to that university. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like real fun. Photoshop and premium working groups on assignments. Awesome, mate. I'm really glad that we could help you. Sounds like sounds like a really awesome project. I would love to hear more about that once you, you have some more details, Hawthorne. So definitely keep on sharing. So the settings we just used for the screenshots, um, I will upload to my Discord because I did a screenshot of the settings. So uh, look at that. Ian, look at that screenshot. I can't see it. <laughs> oh, you, you send, you, did you send it to me? I've put it on the screen. Uh, I, I oh, it's just sharing the game. The game. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh. You can't see it, Ian. It's only for the for the VIPs in the stream. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, the settings I used are these. So I'll just post these in, in my Discord. Uh, so just jump over there or on my Twitter as well. Oh, I see, see the it. screenshot right now. <laughs> you see it on stream, yeah. Yeah, and on the YouTube stream. Yes, awesome, Hawthorne. Northern Ireland, cool. So even the green car fits to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, by the way, we have the new custom livery from the Green Beast of Hell. Uh, took me around 15 hours to make Ian, just crazy. I'm actually thinking about making the uh, Black Series one. Have you seen it? Yeah, I just I don't know. Uh, let me send it to you so you can. I mean, sometimes less is more. I just think I'm I'm looking for these. You know, I mean, even though I included in delivery, you know, the, the V8 B Turbo sticker, which is usually not on the GT4 car. Yeah. And all the details like Driving Academy, Beast of the Green Hell driving performance so i included all the details from the real car that i could find and was working so hard to make it as close with the camouflage and everything and the fun story is that i shared it on twitter with the hashtags and the, one of the drivers who is driving the race taxi around nürburgring saw that and responded to me and was completely blown away it's like i drive that car on a daily basis you really hit the <laughs> nail and then was like oh my god so you mean oh yes i know you sent this one over previously so let me show you guys yeah yeah i'm planning to do this i'm just looking for a time to i like, did um, something I'm, I'm similar for the gt3 mercedes i did something similar the stars are a pain in the butt yeah i might have a plan for that but uh you know it's the actually official um yeah you know, uh, literally I've, for the new AMG GT Black Series, it's called I think, the P1. I think uh, it just might maybe look a bit boring on the GT3 car. Um, so um, yeah, but it's like it's actually an OEM, so maybe some people like it. Yeah, yeah. let's see. Like if okay. anyone, if anyone wants to see it, if it, if it, if anyone wants to see it um, being made, just hit me up on like Discord or Twitter. So let me know so you, so I can like make it and give it to. Stefan, so he can like share it yeah. with you guys. If you want this livery made, let us know. Okay, cool. So Ian, thank you. Thank you so, so much for your time tonight. That was three and a half hours and I think we made awesome progress. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, a pleasure as always. And um, yeah, if anybody needs help and or is interested in engineering uh, or wants to get some custom liveries, send Ian a message and uh, yeah yeah okay so thanks for the plug <laughs> i really appreciate it <laughs> so we will definitely continue the live workshops and maybe split them up and focus on different aspects especially when we do gt3 cars because they are so complex yeah. um i think with the gt4 car it, for you guys out there watching it was really a good first step to understand that i for myself will definitely re-watch my own stream 
<laughs> now again a few times to take some notes and um, I'll definitely work on a summary. I don't know if it will be in written form or in like a, maybe a shortcut, let's see, but I think there was so much valuable information in this stream that we kind of need to bring it on paper and work out maybe like a simple guideline on what to do and what what, what to change based on your feelings. So um, anyway, Ian, I'm just basically letting you go. You're, you're free to go. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure if you uh, haven't subscribed, just subscribe yeah. to uh, Lunatic's channel. He's an amazing guy. I'm basically having a lot of fun just watching his stream so he just gave me like the opportunity to share my a little bit of uh, the knowledge that i have with you guys so uh I, I gotta like give him a massive shout out so he's an amazing guy he helped thank me you a lot. so much and basically the reason that i'm making it is because of his video his first video on the gt3 thing so i remember yeah. <laughs> yeah. i remember the first video kick started it all and then yeah, you had to do yeah. a livery for amir and then suddenly i got a message from a guy named ian <laughs> saying if i can help him and then where then that's basically where it started it all yeah it just, <laughs> just snowballed out, out of the controller yeah. from the... I, I really have to say that the the amount of people that i got to know through uh this community to sim racing i said the cause of competition and and the 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 amount of nice people like also today in chat is just amazing and this is what makes it so much fun um i'm not used to that you know i was playing like world of warcraft and diablo and shooter stuff and the communities are also so always so toxic so this is something completely uh, surprising for me and i'm enjoying it so so much and i i hope that you guys out there kind of feel that or see that that i enjoy it so much and that, that, that that's what keeps me going uh, so th thanks to everyone in the chat, uh, Uncle Ben's Hawthorne Cottage and everyone else that was with us. Um, you just make this worthwhile for me and such an amazing adventure. So yeah, we will definitely continue this. So on Thursday is my race where I'm absolutely no pressure now to really <laughs> showcase that what Ian did with me today actually helped. <laughs> Um, it did yeah, help, it so helps. yeah, yeah, it actually helped. So yeah, we definitely will continue the live workshops and update uh, on Discord and all my channels. And yeah, nice to know you, Peter. Finally, we have a name for Hawthorne Cottage Craft. <laughs> <laughs> so I just need to take a note, Peter. And the other guy is Adrian Ian. So don't forget the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was trying to call him a Adam, so I, I just oh, know that there close. was an A and a B in his name awesome twitter yes great so anyway ian thanks again have a good night and maybe uh, we will just you. have a thank quick you, chat everyone. tomorrow okay i'll see you everyone in next video i hope so so bye everyone yes <laughs> see you bye 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 wow amazing <laughs> it's your wife's account that's cool oh brilliant 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 guys i'll, I'll feel i feel so great uh, that was amazing. I, I started to learn Laguna Seca on, what is it today, Wednesday? I think on Sunday? No. Yeah, I think on Sunday I did my first laps without knowing the track and it was like 138. And then on Monday I continued and got down to like 136, 35 and 34s. And then yesterday I was able for the first time to push into the 132s. And that was when I had the feeling like, okay, now I have a good pace. Um, and a, a good base to kind of build up on that with with some setup help and that was the goal for today and getting below 131 what was it 131.2 is crazy it was really crazy for me um what an adventure i hope it was really insightful for you guys i'll really do my best to work it all out and kind of put it on paper maybe on my um did you know channel in my discord um wow peter your times are down to 136.2 because of me. Oh, that's brilliant. That's amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you for telling me that because I was putting so much. I, I was trying so hard with the Misano video and then I'm still kind of struggling to, to pack everything that uh, I feel and know and do into some words and the video because there's always so much more and I don't want to make it too long and too complicated. So I was really trying to just showcase what I did differently in Misano and I learned so much and that's, that's really cool. Awesome. You improved two and a half seconds nearly. That's great. So just 
if you just keep on practicing and always just watch out for other people who are maybe a bit quicker than you what what line they are taking and just you know just just give it a try and um i don't know if, if you if you have tried my setup for misano which i shared in discord it might even help you get a better feeling that's cool oh you're using the porsche okay wow porsche that's that's a different story <laughs> awesome so yeah i'm just finish it up here um I'll post all the updates and so much more on my Discord, Instagram, Twitter. And yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was an amazing experience tonight. And yeah, there will be more live workshops. That's what I, what I want to do for you guys. Not only entertainment, but bringing you some value and some helpful content. There's just so much to learn. And that's, that's what makes this all so much fun. So uh, I hope for fully see you on thursday where we have the gt4 madness with the sim grid and where i will put this all into action and um have a good night take care thank you so much for watching um make sure you activate the sub notification bell to get any reminders and notification when i'm online and sleep very well have nice dreams good night guys thank you so much bye bye